Whoa. We got the audio playing in the background. Is Whoa. That? We got the that? audio playing in the background. Who's is that? Is Whoa. That? We got Who's the that? audio playing in the Yeah. Uh Josh, it might have been yours. I don't know. I think we're good. I think it, that might have been on my end. Oh, was it? Maybe. Oh yeah, I had your stream open. That's why. You you ruined the introduction, Nate. How could you? Is this is this how well, you're going to start Well, I guess you can't invite me on anymore, man. Is this how right. you're going to start our debate? So, oh, my gosh. God. God I'm, dude, I'm not a professional over here. What over. are you talking about? Nah, we're good. Um, typically, that's how I like to start the show, with a little bit of an awkward introduction. <laughs> um, welcome, everyone. This is Andres Restart. This is in a typical live stream we do at the beginning of the week. Uh, this time, we have a larger panel than usual. Uh, we got a, a Josh. Have you been on the channel before? I don't know. I don't. I don't think you have. But uh, I, I. I don't think I don't. We did something. I just don't remember. I know what we did. I don't remember what. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. Josh and I have done something together in the past, and he's super cool. He's the host of the Nintendo Power Cast. His channel is linked in the description below. He has a lot of other different things going on, so definitely check it out. It's there. Um, super awesome dude. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing so great. I'm so stoked to be here and I'm glad this worked yeah. out. No, for sure. Yeah. Like last week I wanted to do this debate. Right. And I was looking for some people who want to join and you, you hit me up and I was like, oh, this would be awesome. And then I was like, wait a second. I can't do this. <laughs> I have to reschedule. Uh, so and I was all, I had also messaged Nate about it as well. He's like, oh, oh, yeah, I'm down. I want to have a little bit of a debate. And so I had to res uh, reschedule things. But here we are. We're doing it. I'm fusing the debate with just the, kind of like the typical, you know, discussion live stream we have every week. Uh, so the first main topic is this Paper Mario debate. And then uh, we're going to be getting into some the Switch 2 sort of leak situations been going on lately. And just, you know, general Q&A and talking about Nintendo. Uh, for those who are not acquainted with Nintendo Prime, he's also back. And I, he'll probably be back in the future as well. That this is not going to be his last time, despite what happened. How's how's how, how's your day been, buddy? Long. Yeah. Yeah. It's every day. And now I just started an eight day cleanse. Paul Gill Network got mad at me, so uh, it'll be nothing but protein shakes for eight days. What did you do? Um, I I don't want to talk about it right now. <laughs> Okay, but well, I'm being punished. He's he's uh, my he's my dietitian slash uh, personal trainer, and he's not. Right, so uh, this is my diet. I'm actually glad there's multiple people on because with more people, it means more talking and less work from me. So I'm going to be drinking. <laughs> I ordered yeah, yeah, that I, Dr Pepper that we saw that I saw. Oh, on, I don't have that. God, yeah. 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 Things. Dr Pepper, strawberries and cream. Oh, water. See, that's 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 usually the go-to for me. Gatorade zero today, two here. I'm super <laughs> cheating, I and I also went to Costco, and I, I can have, have some nice. Also. I got some Perfect. nice big soft chocolate chip cookies. Ooh, so jelly, I'm gonna, jelly. I'm gonna be busy today. But uh, you know, just because of this, every the next two episodes of my podcast, you're gonna be eating during it, just because you know I can't have anything. Like, <laughs> oh, all. you know, he's gonna I be buying even, chips. He's just gonna be like a chips and pizza and a whole bunch. I'm just gonna be sitting there like, what the fuck? He's gonna walk in after his workout with, with tacos. I'm gonna be like, what is happening? I can't have any of this. I, you know, I actually have been eating healthier lately. This is like my cheat snack. I mean, I don't, I don't like using the term cheat because you know, I, I, I just, I was playing tennis earlier. I'm good, but I, I've been eating um, healthier dinners and stuff. So, uh, with vegetables, Ooh, yeah, vegetables. minimal fat stuff. So, yeah, and Brandon's back. Apparently, he's under the weather, mm. um, but uh, he's gonna truck through it. Apparently. Yeah, yeah, I feel a fever coming on, but I won't let that stop me from being here. To talk okay. about one of my favorite games ever made. Yeah. No. Um we're we're gonna be talking about Paper Mario. It's actually interesting because we got a trailer from Nintendo today about Paper Mario. Like the timing of that just kind of worked out. Uh I think it's gonna feed into our conversation here about if this game is a remake or a remaster. Uh so I'm just going to play that trailer real quick. 
it's like it's a quick trailer. Is it lagging? Seems fun. Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Have you guys seen this yet? Uh, yeah, I yes. saw it earlier today. Yes. Have you seen the comparisons to the um, original introduction? Yes. Yep. I think it was what Game Explained who made that video. I just looked at both. I actually had the original loaded up too. I think it's a really good, like, little trailer. All right, I think that's enough. I, that's enough. I just wanted to kind of show like the 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 <laughs> castle part was like extremely animated because in the original, mm, right. it's not. Yeah, no, it's not. I, I have it actually. I'm not gonna play the whole trailer again. I'm just gonna show you like the the one part. Like you go here, like this is the flat stuff. That's yep. the scene that we just watched. It's right. just yep. a picture. So they added a lot more, which is really really cool. Um. Guys, I will be getting into the chat, by the way. Um, if you guys could let me know how everything is looking and sounding, I'd very much appreciate that. Um, but uh, we'll, when we're done with this Paper Mario stuff, um, we'll do a little bit of Q&A. We'll transition to the Switch 2 stuff, and then we'll close out with some more Q&A. But, um, yeah, uh, Nate, I know you think that this game is a remaster, right? Um, yep. Josh, I, you told me that you whatever whatever side you want to pick, Right. So, but uh, Nate, yep. why do you think Brandon and I are like hard remake? Like that. That's where we stand on this. Why do you think this game is is a remaster? Uh, well, I mean, the, the, here's the thing. I don't know. Uh, and I and and my right. main argument for it being one is something that won't be determined until the game actually comes out. Uh, because defining remake and remaster is very difficult. Uh, it, there's no really set definition, but I've had a very consistent one uh, for pretty much my entire life as a video gamer uh, because it kind of matches the way that I view view movies and all of that. Um, we have remade movies all the time, right? We, we get old movies coming back as new movies, and what is it? All new script, all new actors. All, it's pretty much from the ground up, just based on the original, but it's all new. So you might understand the plot points, but otherwise it's pretty much all new stuff. Um, that to me is how I apply to video games. Um, if it's built on top of the original code base and only the only changes to the game are strictly visual along with some quality of life improvements, it's just a remaster like every other remaster that has quality of life improvements and visual enhancements. And even like showing that cutscene that we showed earlier at the, at the beginning of the game, that's really cool. And a team of probably like 10 people did that in a month or something or less. Uh, and I'm not trying to dismiss that work. It's just kind of like that's that's the kind of stuff you would do in a remaster. So uh, that's just my personal opinion. And I, it's hard to be like, well, how do you know it's made on the original code base? Again, I don't know that. But I have seen enough of Nintendo's remakes and remasters that they drop out there to realize that they tend to uh, outsource studios and reuse the entire code base all the damn time for like everything and it it sounds like me the, the term remake or remaster nintendo themselves isn't using it but um uh, tends to be more of a marketing term hmm. and so i think that's why it gets really confusing out there like, there's things that are called remakes that are literally proven to just be roms with, with new assets but they'll call it a remake just because it sells more copies now i'm not saying nintendo does nintendo's weird they're just calling this you know the original name and then they're calling things like luigi's mansion 2 hd then they called like xenobate chronicles a definitive edition and that was technically a remaster as we found out after it came out so i, I think it's just one of those things that uh i don't have a strong argument because the argument is based on an unknown it's just I, i've i've watched i compared like animation side by side um and and while they've they, they're, they're doing some new things a lot of it just feels very, very samey, which it should. It's the same game. 
Right. Um, I mean, so yeah, you could I, argue that Origami King Color Splash also would feel samey because in well, some ways, yeah, yeah, you know, same similar art styles and stuff. But um, I, I just kind of think that it's probably just like almost everything else Nintendo has touched. I think remakes are extremely rare, extremely rare. Like you got to rebuild from the ground up. And I not just for Sony. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, we're not talking about Sony right now, but <laughs> even even Sony, most of their stuff is just remasters, in my opinion, not really from the ground up remakes. I know the Final Fantasy, but then that's technically a sequel. Believe it or not, it's not actually even a remake. So, um, despite the name, anyways, yeah, yeah that I, I'm ruined, just of the opinion that, that remakes everything. Are, yeah, because like, like they call Final Fantasy a remake, but then you play, play it, it's not actually a remake. No, the the title is for story reasons, yeah. not feature. Qual, you know, gameplay reasons, and it's a yeah, it's just it's yeah. It's very it, so I, I and again, you get to the end of that, and you understand. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't. It's pretty cheap to get on PlayStation, uh, but that's just again, it's not a very strong argument because I can't prove it until it comes out. It's just I've had this debate about remake or remaster with almost every single Nintendo game that's come out, whether it was you or Jake Randall or uh player essence i've had multiple debates and i always get wrecked in every debate then the game comes out and they come to me and they go oh yeah it was a remaster i'm like yeah because my argument can't be won until the game is out <laughs> so yeah. yeah okay okay what do you think that, again that's my definition other people will be like oh it could still be more. I'm fine you, well you i mean oh i want to hear what, what josh has to say and then we'll, sure. we'll 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 get into definitions and stuff yeah I mean, I honestly just pulled up Google. I'm like, what is a port? What is a remake? What is a remaster? Right. Sure. Like this conversation we had a ton when Smash was coming out. Like mm -hmm. there, there there were a lot of people that thought Smash was just a port that they oh, just look at you, Ultimate man. as a port yeah. of the of Smash 4. And I mean, are they wrong? Like th there's some additions, right? But is it just is it a is it an enhanced port, maybe? And so there's there's so many different terms that we can you know, we can split hairs on, but uh, I mean, basing it off the video we just watched, right? It looks to be more of uh, more of a remake than than a remaster, just based on the fact that there were animations taking place, and not just if you if you look at like Mario uh, 3D All Stars, right? I would say those are probably all just remasters in the in the sense that like they're widescreen now and they're you know or at least i think i don't even it's been so long since i played them but i <laughs> think they are like i think we games um, had widescreen but sunshine and 64 didn't but still yeah. still in the in the yeah. in the they, four by they three but hd them i mean they were very clearly just running on emulators and then just applied yeah. new, new things yeah to but them. they i would say yeah. i mean so what's interesting is that like for remasters there's oh, there's a lot of there's a, a huge spectrum of remasters right because remaster all that means is enhancing like you know you could argue that mario kart 8 deluxe is a remaster of mario kart 8 i mean it is mm -hmm. they just kind of enhanced it it's it's, it's the game of the year edition they literally replaced the entire yeah. multiplayer mode i mean yeah i mean yeah the, yeah, the battle battle mode's different that's new content um yeah. so and they they, they they changed some little things but yeah i yeah. mean that that's a remaster you know even though uh, visually it was technically enhanced they improved the resolution they remastered it so you know but more of my question is why is the internet choosing this hill to die on like it seems so strange mm. that like oh yeah that's the part i don't get people get really mad there's, yeah, yeah do you enjoy over, playing like, it then why does it matter what the label is that's, yeah when that's when andre asked me i'm like uh, i don't know but, but, but people are like, really angry about it. i said something about it on x the other day like people just started raging i'm like i don't know what we're mad about here why does it matter yeah facts yeah. it was is it not gonna change it's, a remaster, it's lower quality than a remake that's not what i'm saying Metro Prime Remastered is very clearly a remaster, and I would not argue that's lower quality than other remakes. So no, I, it's yeah. not a quality discussion to me, and I think people maybe view it as one. I think in general, you know, a remake is seen to be something of more ambition than a remaster, and so there is the implication that, oh, if Thousand Year Doors had remastered and Nintendo didn't put as much work into it. Um, but as you brought up Prime Remastered, I would argue in the case of Prime Remastered, 
it's almost better because it was a remaster because they relied on that original code so it could still have that original essence and feel so you know kind of of listening to you guys talk though it makes me wonder is this conversation more about like what the value kind of like what you said nintendo prime like is it more about the value because prime remastered was 40 bucks right if i remember correctly and correct yeah and so now, I was I was shaking that was I was a, shaking my head not because that was an amazing price point one of the best remasters Nintendo's ever put out and only oh, 40 yeah. bucks oh whoa, whoa, whoa now you want to mm-hmm. I think it's funny I actually think that if Nintendo um feature wise like content wise it's the exact same game exact same game but if the if the cover art they just took out if the remastered uh, square wasn't there and the game was priced at 60 bucks it would have sold more Hmm. I don't think so. Well, I don't think it would have. I think that mark. I mean, we'll never know. But like, I, I just Metroid's just not that popular. Yeah, Prime Four has got a lot, got a big, a big yeah. task. We can't prove that, but do you understand? But do you understand the point I'm trying to make? Just that there's a certain value. I think it would have had a higher perceived value, but I don't think yeah. it would have. Yeah. Like, well, the question people. is, did it help Link's Awakening? Yeah. Because they charged full I mean, price for well. it, and they didn't that put game, HD or remaster or anything on it. I mean, it, it's it, it's. Uh, I think it sold surprisingly well. Last I it, heard, it's like, the I highest checked, selling version of the game. Six and a half million copies last I yeah, checked. That's, which that's is, the that's highest good. selling version of the game. Yeah, it's really good. And I, I like what Charles says in the chat: forty bucks, and it will still sell less than Luigi's Mansion Two HD and Thousand Year Door. And mm, I don't yep. think they're wrong. It's. No. Because you know, Nintendo wanted to move those copies of Prime. It's not a it, it's not a, a brand that like you know, we talked about four and then it disappeared. And so it's like they they can kind of uh stoke that fire a little bit. Whereas like Mario and Luigi are in both the titles of these games, there's no way they're coming out at forty dollars. Like well, no, no and, shot. And, yeah, and like Luigi's Mansion and Paper Mario are significantly more popular franchises. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. Uh, they'll just sell more just because they're already more popular, period. Uh, yeah. And- What's wild is that, um, you know, there is a legitimate argument to be made that the Luigi's Mansion 2 HD is going to sell better than Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Yeah. Um, Luigi's Mansion yeah, huge today. <laughs> right. That's like but I, I think I think most will agree. I mean, I've, I've seen I've done polls on this channel already. I've seen polls on Twitter from other people like <laughs> and most people want that like amongst us like core nintendo fans i'm listen if you're like luigi's mansion 4 that's totally fine i'm not saying i love luigi's mansion as well like I, i'm not trying to well, luigi's mansion is a great mansion but all i'm trying to say is that amongst us like core nintendo fans there's kind of a, a mutual agreement that thousand year door is a bigger deal than luigi's mansion 2 hd yeah. but i mean the changes are just so much bigger but in terms of the appeal to the masses you just look at the history of luigi's mansion sales versus paper mario sales it's kind of hard to envision from a sales perspective that Thousand Year Door is going to beat Luigi's Mansion 2. When you just look at like the sales history. Yeah. I mean, because like the the Paper Mario series still sells well, but it, it doesn't sell Luigi's Mansion 3 numbers. And there's going to be a lot of people who play Luigi's Mansion 3 who never played 2 uh, that'll yeah. think, oh, this looks great. This is more of a game I love. I want to get it. And then you look at Thousand Year Door, they go, oh, it's just another Paper Mario. They don't understand the significance of this isn't just another. This is like the definitive, like the best that's ever yeah. been. And it's significantly different than what Paper Mario is today, which in hindsight, uh, I, I was thinking about this the other day because Paper Mario's uh, Thousand Year Door is such a very different one. Fans of current Paper Mario might not like Thousand Year Door. That is that is true. It's a very different a game you like need it's to extremely be it's, it's way closer to to even like super mario rpg than it is anything yeah. to do with the current might be a good thing that that stuff. came out recently first then. yeah that and might have been why they well. brought it yeah. first yeah that could, that could have been the entire reason but yeah i, I feel like anytime the conversation is had about paper mario every person that's played thousand year door says that's my favorite that's yeah. my favorite. Like, I would, you know, it's the best. and I've never played it. I've never played that one. Yeah, the, I, the first one I played, and I'm afraid to say it was Color Splash. Oh, the Color Splash, isn't it? Okay, and, it could have been worse. Then, it could have been Sticker Star. 
Oh yeah, okay, that, that's, yeah. that's and, probably the worst one. Yeah. And then Origami King, but the battle system was so like it mm. was too hard to keep going. I was like, this is not this isn't fun, right? And so I don't like I'm looking forward to jumping in for the first time, having something more like RPG. Because I didn't want to try to find it for my GameCube, but from the, my understanding, it's a pretty hefty. Uh, it's hard to find. Pretty hefty, yeah. Price yeah. tag also. So, so um, I just want to kind of go back to this, this this kind of like, you know, talking point of what this game is, um, because at the end, I mean, to to the to the point we've been kind of overall making, it doesn't really matter. Um, you know, it I kind of went. It shouldn't. Well, actually, that that's a better way to say it. It shouldn't matter, but it does impact. I do think it impacts sales potential. Um, because we go back to the Link's Awakening remake, right? Doesn't it, it's just it's um. I this actually goes into my argument for why it is a remake. By the way, um, the way Nintendo's branding it, it's in line with how they branded their other remakes because it's just the game. The, it's it's the name. There's no moniker. There's no HD. There's no remaster. There's no deluxe. There's no definitive edition. It's just the game's title, and they've done that. The only other games they've other, they've done that for were other blatant remakes, like Link's Awakening, but another more recent one like Super Mario RPG. They just put the title, and there it is. Uh, so like I would say, you know, that definitely Nintendo is branding it very similar to those, and so to me that is a, a strong hint that this is more likely a remake. But I'll throw something else out there to kind of because to your point, we're not going to know for a fact until we kind of like get our hands on the game and people data mine it or see the credits or what have you. Right. Um, but something that Brand actually pointed out when we did our graphics analysis for this game, we got the first initial trailer. This game is running at 30 frames per second, but the original was running at 60. And so. You know, you could say that's kind of a bad thing, but it, it might be a little bit of a hint towards what engine that they're run this game is running on. In other words, not the original engine, uh, which you know, which suggests it's not on the same code, right? But rather on something else, like maybe done in the same engine as Origami King, which is also running at 30 frames per second. So sure, it, it's just kind of possible. You know, I mean, reusing code doesn't always mean reusing the engine. Um, you can recompile the code in the new engine. It just takes yeah, more work. That. Yeah, they do that all the time. But yeah. uh, and it's kind of like mm -hmm. like you bring up Super Mario RPG, and I. The funny thing is, I'm not a data miner, right? So I rely on other people doing it, <laughs> uh, and I still haven't found the answer on if that game reuses code or not. Because just no one, no one cared enough to look into it. Because <laughs> mm. the physics in the game are very, they're identical to the old game. The controls identical like how difficult it is to control the angles you jump is identical to the original and it, maybe they were going for the the original feel but i don't know why you if you're remaking it you wouldn't like actually make that more playable than what it is but that's all the evidence i have because i'm not a data miner and no one cared enough to compare yeah. the codes so yeah i mean just if i guess i'll talk about my thoughts um for me, I'm like like what you guys are saying. It doesn't really matter in the mm -hmm. end what you want to call it—a remake or a remaster. Um, it really just matters what the content is, and the content that I've seen is very exciting for me. It seems even if they are reusing code, they've definitely either changed it heavily or chunked out tons of code for cutscenes and lots of things. I mean that. I mean that intro cutscene. They're definitely not using the well, same cutscenes. Aren't coded. Code. They're they're pre-rendered. So, yeah, but can you think of a remaster well, that has totally they're not pre rendered? Well, scenes? that one is pre rendered, but a lot of them are in engine. So they yeah, yeah, yeah. So, some are in engine. You're you're not wrong. I'm just saying like that yeah, particular the intro, one. Yes, yeah, that is all, that's a pre rendered one. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That's actually a good point. Um, but no, the, a lot of the other cutscenes, uh, more importantly, the gameplay ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I've noticed a lot of them have been like adjusted in ways that i didn't notice at first and until even when i was doing the comparison i didn't notice until after i went back and re was re-watching it like really heavy because i wanted to see exactly everything that was different and they've done a lot of smart changes like um like uh, the positioning of the characters is very very different in a lot of the cutscenes. pretty much every character has a different position different animation different things that they do during the cutscene. Typically, um, this seems to be to, to fit it more into that 16 by 9, you know, widescreen. 
um, because yeah. obviously the game initially was four by three. Um, instead of just you know adding more content to the left and right, they seem to actually have changed and rescripted the cutscenes to to make more sense with sixteen by nine. So even if it is using the some of the same code, um, there's enough changes here um, where it seems that they they went back and thought, okay, what needs to be remade and would make a difference, and they did remake those aspects right so for me it's a remake of uh, to the extent that it matters to me personally yeah i mean i look at it right i mean the game has a completely different art style i don't think I, I'm, I'm not sure how many people realize that it's literally a different art style now like yeah if you go back to the original um it's you you look at it and you literally see like they have like these dots to depict shadows like almost like a comic book right now there's like you know an actual lighting engine in place it's it's, it's complete and, and not only is there a lighting engine in place instead of those dots but it's different it's just different structures and geometry like the trees are different the stuff the skyline is different the the terrain is different and it all looks like paper or cardboard as opposed to whatever it is they did back then like a great a great like thing that's kind of like really easy to see just look at the water in the game so for mm -hmm. modern Paper Mario games, the way the water is, you, you can see the water is made out of like a flowing paper. You go back to a uh, thousand year door on GameCube. It was just, you know, water. It was, you know, cartoon water. And, and so like they literally changed everything to be paper and cardboard in this, which is interesting because the original Paper Mario wasn't really that papery. Uh, right. So I mean, this I, game required heavy amounts of concepting and art, like pre-production, which is not simply something you I don't think you would see in a, a typical remaster. Yeah, I, I will counter that, Brandon, even though it goes against our point that you look at, say, Metro Prime Remastered, they like literally go to that game like they, they provided in, in the game. Like you could look at like the, the collectibles and stuff, the extras. And there's a series of just new art created for the game. So, like, they created yeah. new art for the remaster because even though it was a remaster, it was also kind of a visual remake. Like, they they visually remade a lot of the game. Uh, mm -hmm. So, that it, it, there are a lot of cases where it, it does kind of get a bit confusing. But in the case of Thousand Year Door, it's more so a remake than even Prime Remastered because Prime Remastered is made to look like the original. Thousand Year Door, as I said, is a completely different art style. But going beyond that, and Brian, I, I know this is a point you made to me earlier. The animation work in Thousand Year Door re, uh, remake or on Switch is new. Um, the old Prime Remastered, it's the same animations. There's literally new animations in Thousand Year Door. Like we never got to see behind yeah. the characters. Uh, they have new expressions now. Like I have this one here, um, which is interesting. Let me share it to you guys. Um, You've yeah. got me asking the question at this point, like, is Tears of the Kingdom just a remaster? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, I'm kidding. Let's, let's save that for a debate <laughs> next week. Um, <laughs> no, nah, that, that uh, but like, so you see this here, right? These, this is, uh, I'll, you can see that this surprise look was not a look that was in the original thousand year door it was just they would just use an exclamation point and so this is a new animation that they have in there but you also can see that this like style of mario has been used in different mario games since there's a sticker star version the origami king version and when you look at these side right. by side like the model's different right like you can see that this this has multiple layers it's not just one flat surface yeah they were going for more of a sticker almost look in the uh an origami king yeah um but that's almost kind of how the original on thousand year door looked as well like there was some mm. layering but it wasn't as obvious like this and there was also not this like white outline um so you know the at the actual character models have been updated they have more animation work the entire art style is different there's a whole new lighting and like the, it just visually the game looks completely different um uh, so from that perspective, I would say that uh, it's, you know, probably a remake. Um, I should also add that we do have evidence that there's new content in the game. Like we've seen like the, the rogue port, the lobby area. We've I think there mm. was like a, a purple toad 
that we seen in the original trailer, not in the, in the original trailer for Switch, right? In the original game, that character just does not exist. So if you have new characters, if you have a completely new art style, new animation work, the, the, the entire like visual rendering engine is different. I mean, at what point do we call it a remake? If that if that's not a remake, what is? I guess is my is my is the real question here. But uh, Nate, it's not like I don't understand your point though. You know, it's, it, and it kind of goes back to what we were saying earlier. I guess it doesn't really matter what it actually is, right? Because you can make the argument that you know, let's say everything I'm saying is true, but when we actually get like the data mine, it's like, oh well, as it turns out, yeah, they just remastered everything to Kingdom Come, but it's still that original code at its core, right? Which, you know, according to some developers, is is a remaster because that's why Prime Remastered is still a remaster because it's all based off the original code. But, yeah. you know, everything about this game, like I can't think of a single Nintendo game that has been as changed. Like, um, Zeman Zenomi Chronicles Definitive Edition, there's still artifacts from the original game. Um, there's I haven't seen any artifacts at all. I mean, obviously we haven't played the game yet. Yeah. So maybe there's something there, but considering they've completely changed the art style, I just think that's like, and also as Brandon was saying, like the literal structure of just like the world because of the widescreen, the scripting of the scenes, how things are positioned is slightly different. Yeah. But I remember when I was making the initial uh, graphics comparison for the video we did on, on Andre's channel, um, it was hard to line up the cutscenes because almost every single cutscene was different in some significant way. Either the timing of the cutscene was significantly altered, and I don't mean that they cut out parts of the cutscenes very clearly, all one flowing cutscene, just much different timing. Um, the characters would come at different positions in the screen, or the animation would just be completely different. Like uh, when you first see Hooktail. He does like a roar and then you go into the battle. But every single part of the animation for that is completely different in the new game. Literally none of it's reused. It's a completely different animation. Like a, a lot of the cutscenes have been altered in ways that made it very hard to actually line up with the original game. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it kind of goes to the point like this game is just there's a lot of work put into this game. It's not a lazy effort. It's not a, a quick cash grab. Like this is whatever you want to call it. However, it, it's going to ultimately be defined. This deserves all the attention that, that it's going, it, it, it can get because it, they've done everything they should to re envision this game. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all I have to say on it. Really. I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to add or counter. Um, did I did I pick the right side? I don't I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if there is a right side. I think the side is we're all excited for the game. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think the right yes. side is Definitely enjoying that. video games and being a normal consumer, not a fanboy. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah, look at my shirt. Oh, oh god. Oh. Oh. What what is it? You can is be that, a fan a without being a Sonic? fanboy. It's okay. <laughs> oh, it's definitely yeah. a fanboy shirt. Yeah, it's a good one though. Oh, yeah, for I'm sure. wearing a Metroid shirt, so I have a Zelda shirt go. somewhere. Yeah. All right. Well, um, let's check in with the chat here and let's let's uh transition a bit. You know, I didn't put any background music this time. I kind of feel like an awkward quiet. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> feel right. But I kind of like missed in the beginning, so it didn't feel right to just kind of like oh add it in later. Yeah. So, we let can me, let me... turn that intro back on and let it echo again. Yeah, see, that, that, that'll do it. You know, I blame Nate because <laughs> no, I was, it won't, I it won't echo. It won't echo. No, I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even realize but... because it's usually not. And I'm like, oh, wait a second. I actually had the stream playing. I never have. <laughs> I do that all the time, actually, where I accidentally have the stream open. And then I think there's audio like echo, but it's just my end. <laughs> yeah it, it happens sometimes um but uh checking with the chat here uh let's see ronnie fosgan from earlier asked do you think that metroid Prime master being a shadow drop hurt the potential sales of the game 
I yeah. think so. Uh, like, I my my take is 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 this. You look at how Nintendo marketed Metroid Dread, and they heavily marketed Metroid Dread, became the best-selling Metroid game, three plus million, and it reviewed well. It was, you know, it's considered to be a quality game. But Metroid Prime Remastered is even more significantly critically acclaimed. It's, you know, it's a historically great game. And there was so much talk about this game for years. And yeah, there was an excitement when it was shadow dropped, but there wasn't a long marketing campaign. And the game was even priced at 40 bucks. And yet it sold half as much as Metroid Dread, even though it's a higher, it's an even, it's considered to be an, an even higher quality game. And yes, there are exceptions, but in general, 3D games tend to outperform 2D games. Yeah, I, I can't. Now, I can't I, imagine a first-person shooter is less popular than a side-scrolling shooter. Yeah, so I, I just kind of think that it it did hurt the sales. Now you can make the argument that because it's a remaster, maybe that hurt its potential to sell well. Mm -hmm. While Metroid is a brand new game. Um, and you could also argue, well, maybe just the masses think Dread's a better kind of game. And you can make the argument, but it's kind of hard to substantiate, sub substantiate that, right? Um, but, you know, my, my take is that Nintendo didn't market it well. And that's why it only performed as well as it did. I think it also helps for Dread that they dropped it and it was like a month later it was announced as being up for Game of the Year. And I think we forget that the Game Awards does one thing that really helps, and that is when you're up for game of the year, sales get increased for every single game that's up for it. That makes sense. Yeah. Because it brings attention to it to people who aren't paying attention. Right. Anyway, it's interesting. Let, let's say Primary Mastered had new content. Like, what if they added, like, a create boss battle or something? Then it has new content, right? And then what if they call it, like, Metroid Prime, like, not remastered, but, like, just give it, like, a, a different name, right? And so then it kind of enters more so the conversation of what they did for Resident Evil 4 Remake, right? Where it was, it's a remake, but it is kind of more like a reimagining. I also, there's the, the one thing I've always thought about with Metroid as well, and this is, like, the whole series, but even, like, just comparing Dread to Prime, um, I would almost argue that, like, Metroid Dread's almost an easier game to get into gameplay-wise. Whereas Metroid Prime might be more of a masterpiece, I think it's a lot. It's not as appealing to a massive audience. It's like you either have to be really into that kind of game. Whereas like Metroid Dread style, that whole Metroidvania Castlevania style is a very very popular uh, indie thing. But we're constantly getting games like that all the time. People are more familiar with that style. Yeah. Even if one individual game in that genre doesn't sell a lot, because there's so many of them. Yeah, it's something that people are and there's a like. lot of really high critically acclaimed ones too out there that people know. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair point. Um, and, and then maybe that has something to do with it as well. You know, the, the answer usually the the truth is somewhere in the middle, right? It's probably yeah. not just one reason why. Uh, but I I kind of think that Nintendo could have pushed. I mean, Prime Master like critical from a visual perspective, from a critical acclaim perspective, was one of the biggest games that last year. And it only sold a million copies. Like Nintendo could have, they could have, they could have priced it at sixty dollars, and they could have marketed it, and they would have made more money. Probably. Yeah, the shadow drop definitely hurt it. There's no no question there. There's no, I mean, even looking at chat, you know, like uh, I think it says cello says if a game is announced, um, I can have time to prepare to buy it. Like I think that's that's true for a lot of that. That's probably true for a lot of people. I mean, yeah, we're all covering oh, yeah. this stuff, and it's going to be day one, right? But I think I, I think for the, your your average consumer, they're gonna they they they're not watching the direct, and they're gonna they're gonna need to know that this stuff that this stuff is out there. And Nintendo has always struggled with Metroid. Like they've like. Yeah someone else in chat said it too it's been around for almost 40 years and it's still it still struggles to sell you know and it's unfortunate because i mean the first time i played prime like on the game on the gamecube like that was that was an incredible experience even with the goofy controls and having to like point and click and everything like it was still just just amazing for that time and it it looks so incredible on the switch and and plays even better and it's uh it's it's sad that it did not that it did not sell better yeah um but i i do agree um with the point that there is something about the game but i actually made a, vi a video like a few weeks ago about this for metro prime it's kind of one of the reasons why i think with metro prime 4 
we're going to see some kind of significant steps that will help to modernize the game. I mean, just look at like modern FPS uh, games, um, games now, right? Like you have a lot of shooters where they move around with some agility, right? Like you have the whole like dash run running on walls and, and things like this. These are moves that we see Samus do in say Metroid Dread, for example, but on, a, in, and that's in 2d just, you know, play apex legends or Titanfall or just even the most recent call of duty. Those kind of mechanics would work really well for a modern Metroid game. Mm. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Just better movement options it would be nice. Yeah. Um, but I do anyway, think uh, not only the remaster. Uh, oh, you sorry. go first, Brandon. I was just gonna say real quick. I do think the remaster helps the game become more accessible because you can essentially just throw it into a dual stick shooter mode. I think it's yeah. a little bit too complicated to put it in that mode, and they should have made it more clear. For the average player the the mode selection for the controls is very confusing um but you you can essentially just make it play like any modern shooter does yeah what, what point are you gonna make josh well i hope it goes beyond just catching up to modern shooters but it would be nice to see it like you know potentially reinvent something i mean going into the ball form in metroid prime and then you know traversing some of the map that way and stuff that was that was pretty unique you know, from back in the back at that time, from going from third to first person, and the move, you know, the movement was different. But let's take it so much further in the next in the next one, and in, in in ways that I don't, you know, I don't necessarily have ideas off the top of my head. But like, just to see them, uh, you know, potentially. I mean, it's like when when COD went from your your run to your sprint, right? All of a sudden, it, it just yeah. kind of just kind of changed some things up there, like, and, and just seeing. Even, you know, I mean, we've seen like in Super Metroid how fast she could she could uh, you know run through walls and do it. like I think with with modern technology and the way the way games are now, I they they have the potential to uh, get, get the hype going around it, get people talking about it, right? Like let's get let's get hell diver, hell divers level conversation happening around Metroid Prime. You know, where like everybody's everybody's talking about needing to play that game because of some of the stuff it does so well. And I mean, maybe that's why it got moved to retro in the first place. Maybe everything they were seeing was so basic and like, yo, this would have worked maybe 15 years ago, but that's not going to work now. And 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 hopefully we see the that the, the envelope pushed a bit with uh, with Prime 4 make it I, worth the I, wait. I really like that no i really like that thinking um like i i i agree they, they shouldn't just do um you know kind of par for the course like we're, we haven't we haven't mm -hmm. waiting this long for par for the course i mean you really think about it game was announced summer 2017 yes i understand they had to do a restart but it's already 2024 we haven't seen gameplay yet they i think there's a there's a solid chance the game's not even coming out this year that to me that has more to just sort of do with like the switch two scenario right but the the main point is is that it's been in development for a very long time even if we assume it started january 2019 which i think you can make an argument it even started earlier right like it's been a long time they've had you know zelda levels of time to to work on this game and whenever the zelda team puts out something with you know a six-year development cycle like it is a revolutionary game right so you know I would love it if, you know, Nintendo, I say Nintendo and Retro Studios, Retro Studios is a part of Nintendo, but what I mean is, you know, like with um, Kensuke Tanabe, right? Like, you know, Nintendo EPD members and like different parts of Nintendo, the, the, the Nintendo, you know, the company, right? From Japan and, and so on, bringing in all their best members, you know, even hiring some of the best Western talents. You've seen them hire a lot of really quality AAA devs around um we hope that they're putting something together really special here I, i'll throw out one random idea because you were like kind of you brought up like you don't even know what they would do they would be like oh this is really cool and different like something that i kind of love about samus and you look at throughout the different games yes she's kind of like this like almost like cold-blooded like you know bounty hunter that just you know she's just getting the job done right but there's also this other side to her where she's kind of in tune with nature, right? She has these maternal instincts and she's very caring for, you know, innocent life. Um, I would kind of like them to go into that a little bit. Like, you know how, like, there have been a few games where she's interacted or saved some of the, like, the alien life forms. What if we kind of see her, 
you know, some of that in this game. Because if, if this is like a big explorative game, maybe we see a lot of like alien fauna and there's more of a research to that and there's more interaction with that. And even like with animal life, like what if she can like, you know, condition certain creatures and maybe ride them or have them help her in some way. And that's kind of different from say, you know, Halo Infinite where you're just kind of marching around killing things and moving. Like it, it adds another layer of kind of like uh, immersiveness to the world that I think would, would help it stand out. So that's uh, agreed. I yeah. That, and you know, you br you brought up infinite and like even that, that game, the way you could traverse with the grapple hook and all that kind of stuff, like yeah. the grapple hook was typically in, at least in the first prime was, was usually had to be used in anchor points, right? right. Not just shot right. anywhere. And so you know maybe maybe more open world maybe a lot more exploration and dude like <laughs> you just made me think of something all right all right all right so you know how like we've been begging for the hook shot and we didn't get the hook shot in tears of the kingdom what if at one point in tears of the kingdom development they were like hey what if we go for a hook shot right but also because metro prime 4 has been all that other big nintendo game they've been working on for so many years they're like hey you have this cool physics system going on with the ultra hand maybe stick with that and we're going to make another kind of open explorative game that has something like the hook shot and that's samus with the grapple beam I, i'm, you know, I'm just putting it, it out there. yeah it would be super interesting i mean what would actually be really cool about it is they would potentially excite more of the zelda fan base too like if they actually like showcase samus with the grapple beam using it like a like a hook shot and like i don't want to say metro prime 4 would be open world but you know expansive areas and so that could get a lot of even zelda fans excited if there is like this moment in the marketing or trailer where it's like oh that's that's a hook shot but in metroid you know i think that could that could be pretty cool incorporated into combat as well to where you could pull the enemies into your blaster and like oh, do some yeah do some like like really cool and like you know add some different animations to the to the kills to where it's not Imagine just you know strangling a space pirate <laughs> oh dude like come Doing there. doom style finishers yeah 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 without excessive blood they could totally get right with that. yeah why not dude that would be <laughs> awesome uh, I'm I'm here for it, but that's the kind of stuff. Like I remember when the first Doom came out, somebody else mentioned it in chat. Like one of the first things I did was do slow mo, uh, slow mo finishers from the first Doom game, and that video went went pretty crazy, honestly. And it was, it was, it was because that was like that made that game quite a bit more fun. It was very there was a lot of variety to it, right? It wasn't like three finishers and that was it. Like there was multiple finishers per per character and that's a that's something that would that would be fantastic for her to see and but to incorporate less of like the brutality that doom has and more of her like acrobatics and and just some of her uh her style and nuance you know i think there's a almost like a dance i think they could they could really um, really do some amazing things there it's interesting you bring that up because while Other Rim gets a lot of flack, that's actually one of the things Other Rim did a good job of. Because in some of the combat sequences, you would see Samus be really acrobatic and have like these really cool, like scripted moments where she'll grapple a space pirate or kind of dance up a giant boss and like blast him in the face. Like, so there is already, it's not even just in, in, in Other Rim. Uh, Metroid Dread has it too. Uh, where there are these moments where she grapples an enemy. I, I I would love to see that. And I do you brought up a great example with Doom. Like if they can go in that direction, that would be pretty cool. Which would, you know, that wouldn't be a revolution, right? That's something that's been done before, but seeing that in Metroid would be fun. And we haven't seen it in any places other than Doom, right? Other than like in Halo multiplayer, or maybe if you like I'm trying to think if they added that in the I think they may have added it in like Halo 5 and stuff where you could do the finishers if you assassinated correctly but i i think there's just there's a lot like there's so much they could do with all of her different weapons that it it wouldn't have to just be like the you know the the mortal combat finish him from doom but more yeah. of the uh like i said just more of like a you know if i'm going to use the grapple it's going to be this animation on this enemy and if i'm going to use the missile you know at close range or like you know even like like dropping a bomb and kicking an enemy away and watching them explode just like just some of the i don't know just some of those moments that like we have to share 
right? It's going to be different yeah. for all of us. We're going to want to get them up on X. We're going to want to put them up on TikTok and all those things. Like I want to see that's, the same that's way we see like those Breath games. of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom mm -hmm. combo videos with like yes. someone from Japan that has like I don't know how they're able to accomplish that. I want to see that for Metroid as well. Like that that would be yeah. that would be epic. Uh, but uh, moving on with the chat here, um, Tyg. Hey, you, you never know. Paramount might break five million with this. I listen. You know, Nintendo's uh, yeah. not even branding it as like a remaster HD thing. You know, I think the branding does help. Um, I think there's a lot of quality going into this. It could be the best selling Paper Mario game to date. And that may happen. And Luigi's Mansion may still outsell it because Luigi's Mansion's on another level. Um, but I I'm going to get both games anyways. So, uh, Sam talks games. It's unfortunate Prime Master will do worse than Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Yep, that's just life, though. That is just life. Uh, got a couple super chats here. Uh, Charles, uh, thank you for the tip, buddy. Uh, Charles says, third word, make master. Also tip. Yeah, yeah maybe, maybe Thousand Year Door is a make master. That that makes sense. It's the master of the makes. <laughs> and then George FT with another super chat. Thank you for the super chat, buddy. Why do you think Nintendo shall drop Metroid Prime Remastered? Um, I think they were experimenting. And they wanted to start getting Metroid out the door because they, they saw the light at the end of the tunnel for Metroid Prime 4 development. That's what I think. Hmm. Any other it ideas? It is odd because, like, they did not have to do that. There was nothing, um, you know, imminent or coming out for Metroid or something that they needed to get out beforehand or immediately. Um they didn't have to do this. They chose to do this, though. To be honest, I'm not sure why. Because as we've discussed, I don't. I don't think it was good for the game. It may have been a last-second decision, or as you're saying, Andres, maybe they were just experimenting. Yeah, I, I think they're just messing around. Like they did it again later too with with uh, was it Pikmin one and two? So yeah, like they didn't just Those do it were one time. Cheaper to make. Those were yeah. sure simple little things. I mean, yeah. I guess you could argue that Metro Prime Master might also not have been that big of a yeah. It might not have either. been. They that might they might have did that in a year. It was a smaller I mean, team. We don't you know. You can make the argument that Prime Master might have just been like them testing an engine out, right? They're kind of like a very very much like Wind Waker HD. Like they were just kind of getting acquainted with the hardware. Um, yeah. They put that I out mean, there. Didn't we hear that they did a re like a demo tech demo for a remake of Prime One that they showed Nintendo? Yeah. So according to Imran Khan, who, by the way, if, this is going to be interesting when we get into our, our next subject, but Imran Khan is someone who's pretty consistently reliable, um, like extremely, whenever they say something with within a few months, it, it materializes yeah. um, usually um, they that yeah, that that they came from them, right? Uh, that okay. there was this demo that Retro Suits put together and Nintendo saw it and they're like, oh, yeah, sure. You can make that, but also here's Metro Prime Four, and then short, and then supposedly that's when they announced the the restart. How how many of us double dipped on Metroid Prime Remastered? I intended on double dipping, but I never did. Okay, I still have to. Any, anybody? Still that case. You mean like bought it digitally and then bought it? Buy it twice. Way? Yeah. 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 Later, no. Physically. Did yeah. you? you did. I, you definitely I, I did. double dipped. I double yeah. dipped twice. I got it digitally, and then remember, at first it was hard to find physical. So yeah, I ended up like having two pre-orders go through, and oh, you triple so, dipped. So <laughs> I, yeah, I ended up triple dipping, uh, not intentionally, but uh, you want to so know what I triple dipped on? I've triple dipped. What's... Okay, I double dipped Skyward Sword. Well, if you count Skyward Sword HD that's a triple dip but i talk about the original release right um but for super mario 3d all-stars i bought it three times because i thought it was going to be like a hot commodity <laughs> you know? oh you fell for the fomo <laughs> oh no uh, <laughs> well i actually just gave the copies to my friends so i've so. i got i tripled the tears of the kingdom i bought it digitally in japan oh wow because i couldn't wait 12 hours to play the damn thing then I bought it digitally in the U.S. because I had a collector's edition pre-order, but it was delayed. It wasn't going to show up for a couple of days. So. 
Wow. Three times. Yeah. Thanks, Nintendo. You got me. Thank you for the yeah. vouchers. <laughs> Save right, me a little right. money. But I, I, I do wonder if that wasn't because I did hold off on Pikmin. I didn't double dip on that one. But, y- you know, w- we talk about it, it potentially hurting. They they still marketed that somewhat once it released physically, right? And I'm just curious if the numbers would have been less if uh, if they the hadn't done that. Yeah, that, yeah. That, is an, that is an interesting point. It didn't, it, it had to have helped sales somewhat. Um, I kind of feel like it was a negligible amount, though. I mean, how many people are going to buy a game twice? The hardcore <laughs> so second Nintendo hardcore. fans, hardcore, Nintendo fans. Yeah, like like, yeah. like hardcore. Like, there's people that might like uh, in today's mm-hmm. age get it digital for convenience. It's just convenient to have all your games ready yeah. to go. You don't got to switch cartridges. But then they buy physical for the nostalgia and to have a sealed copy that they just like to have. They just want that sealed copy. Yeah. I know, I, I know, mean, plenty of people that do it. That's just collectors. They just like want to collect their favorite games. What if right. that's why Nintendo did the Shadow Drop? What if they they did that sort of model where did Shadow Drop at first and then physical release two weeks later, just to see the ratios? Because they are just trying to see, you know, compare how games sell, you know, digitally versus physically. Because I mean, we know what direction that we're they're headed in, right? Like they, we don't want to say it, but eventually. You know, most if not all physical games sales are going to phase out. Maybe not, uh, right. not this gen. Maybe not next gen. But before the end of our lives, it's going to happen, unless something changes in the industry that makes it all of a sudden more appealing to 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 do physical again for the masses, including the companies involved. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But uh, let's let's get into our next topic here. So it's related to the whole like sort of switch to situation. Um, Nay, I'm actually glad you came on for this because I didn't even cover like the whole GameCube patent thing. Like mm. I saw that patent and I just kind of like eh, it seems like a bunch of nonsense to me. So I didn't even I didn't even like bother with it. Right um, now, do I think that we could see like GameCube NSL on Switch Two? Yeah, down the road. Sure, I think that's possible. Um, but otherwise, like, I didn't really look into that, right? But there was um, this thing that came out where Nash Weedle did his Leak Express thing where he said um, that he heard that there has been an update to Dev Kits, a significant update. Um, what that significant update is, we don't actually know. Uh, Nash Weedle put his speculation, he distinguished between leak and speculation that he thinks it has to do with rescaling. Now... Nashville's credibility has been called into question as of late. Um, and people have sent me a lot of things, and I do want to touch on that uh, before we end the stream tonight. But before getting into that, I want to point out that with this particular leak, um, Necro Felipe from the owner of Universal Nintendo um, t- retweeted Nashville's post about the dev kit thing. And then on Fanny Boards, followed that up and explained why because he had heard a similar story. So he's corroborating Nashville's story. So that's what's going on in terms of like this latest sort of Switch 2 stuff. But if Nate, if you could, you know, expand on the whole patent GameCube thing, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Uh, sure. So like at the same time that he did the Switch 2 thing, he also put out a GameCube patent uh, and he didn't explain where he got it from or any of that stuff because he typically doesn't. In fact, in the past, he's put his own watermarks on patent images for some reason. I don't understand uh but like odyssey does that too yeah i don't I, you don't own that so it's all public information i don't i don't get it it's like you i get it because you think you discovered it so you want credit but that's not yeah that's, that's what it, it is that's why people put their watermarks i think oj puts or at least he used to put watermarks on his videos gaming explain does it too a lot, a lot of uh, venues put watermarks on whatever thing they're covering yeah, I, I I just disagree with that, and I always have. But that's besides the point. Um, so the problem was that he put this thing out there. It didn't say GameCube in it anywhere. Uh, then he put up these uh, follow-up images that had, like, Zelda misspelled and, and didn't really explain a whole lot. Um, and so it turns out the patent is real. It is about GameCube. Uh, it was from 2001, originally. Uh, it is a it, it was a patent from Germany. And so I, I found all that. I, I talked to Nash Weedle behind the scenes. I kind of tried to figure out 
the trail because he couldn't remember where he got it from, which I was like, what the hell? How are you just posted this yesterday. What, what are we talking? Anyways, uh, did some digging, found the patent and uh, found the images. And yeah, Nintendo themselves were misspelling things. It, it, it's whatever. It's a patent. This isn't a final release. So Zelda has an R instead of an L. Cool. Who cares? Uh, but basically the patent was for, for emulation uh, and uh, GameCube emulation and this is all the way back in 2001 so they were also talking about emulating N64 games apparently there was a, a time that they were thinking about doing some sort of N64 emulation on a GameCube um, never happened of course and then they updated the patent so the, like I said this is like a 20 plus year old patent but then they updated it two weeks ago the problem is I couldn't get the old patent to load on the Wayback Machine so I don't actually know what's different so I can't figure out what they updated, but literally it had not been touched. This patent had been untouched for 22 years. And all of a sudden it's updated two weeks ago. And it's so dealing with Game emulation. Cube and N64 emulation patent from Nintendo was updated recently that was made 22 years ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And it was originally a, an N64 one that talked about the, or I'm sorry, a GameCube one that it had GameCube stuff in it. Um, not just, but there was also a mention of N64 emulation in it. Uh, and then it talked about GameCube emulation. And uh, I think the part that he quoted might have been the new, might have been the update because it's not referenced a lot in, in, in some of the, like you dig deeper into the document, the idea of selecting a game and it's switching between emulators. That's not mentioned very often. That's only at the very beginning in the, in the info new description part. So I was like, that's why I wanted to find the original. So I could be like, oh, is that what they did? Like, and if, if that's the case, are they bringing these some of these old emulators back and then they're going to do something that NSO doesn't do, which is put all the games together and actually just choose the emulator based on which game you choose rather than having a whole separate app for each individual system. Mm -hmm. And that right. to me would be a massive update to NSO if that's what they were doing. Also, obviously, can't ignore that it's technically a GameCube patent. So does this mean GameCube NSO? So it, it's really just... He put it out there. The patent's real. It's speculation what it actually means. Uh, my biggest thing with patents is always, hey, patents are what they are, but they don't always mean anything. Um, right. They could be ideas that are scrapped or canceled, but sometimes they do. Like when we had those Tears of the Kingdom patents back at the end of 2022, that stuff was stuff we didn't know was in the game. Different combat ways, different ways we shoot arrows. All of that, well, not all of it, but almost all of that ended up being in Tears of the Kingdom. So it was like a portal patent. We haven't, we, we never saw that. Yeah. 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 And there's been patents on a few other things that have turned out. So like the patents aren't always irrelevant. Uh, even though Nintendo said the president said, I think last year is like, Hey, the patents out there. Like if, even if we did this, it wouldn't be in that form. And it's like, okay, well there's patents proving that you have done that before, but it's rare. So I would just say that they definitely something they, they've been messing around with something GameCube. I wouldn't be surprised if there's a GameCube NSO on Switch 2. Uh, if they decide one day they want to combine all the stuff together, like that could be something they're working on to launch for Switch 2. Is like, hey, we're not going to bring the individual apps back. We're just going to have a general NSO app. And from there, you can pick your game, and that'll just pick the emulator. I don't know. That would make sense, too, so people don't have to have a billion separate game apps. But I have no idea. We have no idea if this means anything. So all I will say to Nash Riddle's credit is it is a real patent. And it was updated after 20 plus years, two weeks ago. But we have no idea what it means. Yeah. You guys want some, some actual breaking NSO news? Sure. Is it down uh, it, maintenance? It, no, it's, it's, <laughs> they just announced uh, that uh, F Zero Maximum Velocity is coming soon to the, <laughs> wait, the Game Boy. Wait a uh, second. App. That is, uh, that's, that's not freaking you. Yeah, that's not a little announcement. Wait a second. I gotta well, see I this guess. myself. I'm that's not the biggest FBO fan, but, um, so that's whoa. that's you know that's why. Yeah, yes, they just put it on there on seven their minutes account. ago. Oh, yeah. yeah, I was literally I watched it as they uploaded, and I was like, ah, oh, just waiting for my opportunity to let you guys know. That's like the oh. perfect edition because it's it's like the exact same style as F zero ninety nine. It's mm, great, bruh. Yeah, basically, this confirms. F Zero GX remastered. It doesn't confirm anything. It, does, <laughs> you know, it doesn't confirm anything, but it, it makes you feel like if they're doing this, then they must be doing it, that, it, right? F Zero Nine Nine. They're giving F Zero more attention, baby. F Zero GX remastered is, is confirmed to be the holiday game of 2024. Oh my god! That look, I'd be excited, <laughs> but that would not be a great holiday release. 
It'd be a I'll great holiday you. release for, for me. me. <laughs> <laughs> we for right. both of us as we're live yeah. streaming. They had online yeah. multiplayer. We're playing together on our own channels. Hell yeah! Exactly. That that's <laughs> that's all that matters. That'd be fun, man. I love that zero. Be so cool. Yeah. Um. It is. It's that's a, that's a cool update. I'm that is a, that. The, the Nintendo does it every now and then. Some Shadow drops some unannounced NSO games. I, I like that they do that. Yeah. See, this Nintendo is a great way to Shadow drop. It's a service that you subscribe to. That these are right. good shadow drops. <laughs> yeah, it has been a little active today with the Paper Mario trailer with the shadow drop. This is, I think, this is kind of like the the little bit of news to help tide us over until April comes around, um, which is interesting. But uh, anyway, so yeah, and apparently uh, Tales of the Shire is coming to Switch, and I didn't even know that. Nintendo of America yeah. retweeted it, so it's obviously coming to Switch. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'm I'm a big Lord of the Rings guy, so I'm like, oh, well, sweet. I'm now looking at that. That is, I guess I'll I'll share it uh, for you guys that don't know what we're talking about. Yeah, um, it's got a different art style than I would expect. That's probably why it fits on Switch. Yeah. I don't even know what screen I was sharing, but <laughs> not the right one, apparently. <laughs> like I knew they'd advertise Snow Day because that that just released. So I knew they'd do that today. But yeah, they've been pretty active today. Check this out, guys. This is. Tales of the Shire. Yeah, there's a trailer oh, no, no. coming soon. So the trailer hasn't dropped like yet. Like a snow shaded Lord of the Rings game. Yeah. yeah for wow. Switch. I'm excited about this, actually. It's so cool. Yeah, I yeah. gotta see the trailer. I wanna see what the gameplay is. Because, it, right. I mean, this looks great. Yeah. Uh, I can even see, like, you know how, like, um, the wind blows on the grassy hills? Like, yeah. They showed a little bit of that there. That was cool. To see yeah. right there. Yeah. yeah. They got a good amount so, of movement well, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens cheers to the kingdom who <laughs> <laughs> yeah right hey dude i yeah. i love i love when we get good adaptions like howard's legacy was yeah. a good good adaption although completely original hey if this is completely original too that's fine but let's just have it be good be a good game yeah but, when you, you know, were talking about the gamecube patents yeah. and stuff and the six like in the 64 being mentioned all i could think about was a 64 player like the game boy player for the gamecube <laughs> like where you could just <laughs> shove the <laughs> yeah. shove the uh n64 games right in the side like that yeah. would have been super possible wow yeah that, i mean there was a whole bunch of things that they could have just done that easy we'd all lose yeah. the disc though that disc would still be worth a fortune just like the just like the game boy yeah. player yeah but I mean, Josh, you know, what what do you kind of make of I mean, I guess what, what's your kind of take on, you know, the different like Nintendo leakers? Like, wh what's your kind of perspective on, you know, these rumors? Do you believe them at all? Like, is there some credibility behind them? What's your stance? I, I Honestly, I mean, <laughs> I've been doing a Nintendo podcast for seven years. So when news is slow, leaks and rumors help keep uh, keep the lights on right like it's it, everything is always with a grain of salt and it's and it's more just stuff for for conversation starters right like we're we're, we're typically just doing uh doing roundtable discussion and and you know sometimes they're they're accurate sometimes they're they're right on and sometimes they're they're not and you know we were kind of talking before the show like i i wonder how much how much is uh in the eyes of nintendo is okay to talk about and how much is not and like because i you know i have i have i have long-term goals of of potentially working with them and all that stuff so it's i mean i kind of just i go with the companies that uh or like the articles that i see that are like you know nintendo life and my nintendo news that kind of stuff and i'll, I'll but uh, every now and again, I'll I'll go down a a, a, a Reddit rabbit trail or or mm. really start digging it because some of it's just kind of fun at, at the same time to like kind of un untangle everything and like well this could point to this and you know when it comes to patents and everything it's like they're keeping stuff up to date all the time so I don't know that it always it always points at stuff you know i'm very i'm very mario kart focused with my content and so like even that game getting a going into maintenance and i'm like what like i'm looking everywhere mean? like what what does that right. mean what is, the, is there another update coming out you know so but again the majority of it is just it, it just makes for fun conversation i don't i don't take any of it like 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 so serious that it's like 
you know, I'm 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 betting the we <laughs> the guys on right? the show sometimes bet the hot chip challenge, and I'm like, nah, oh, you guys, God. you guys, you guys are crazy, right? Like, so they have to do that live on the show, so it's it's crazy at times. But I I mean, for me, it's just it it keeps the conversation moving and it can be it can it can really be fun and but again like like we were talking about with the remake remaster thing some people get really fired up about this stuff like it's like it's gospel and it's like you know you, you, when you when you when you've been following game hype cycles and stuff for as long as i have you kind of just you just roll with the punches you're like oh that'd be cool you know and then yeah and then and then you see like the zelda art book come out for tears of the kingdom and it's like oh, maybe like seeing seeing some of the repercussions of having that reposted i'm like maybe i should pull that off my website you know what i mean like yeah. it's yeah like i, I don't know nintendo, you know. nintendo was very not happy about that hmm. yeah yeah and some yeah. people thought that it was like a, an intentional leak that it was some sort of like marketing ploy <laughs> as if they needed to market the game like they clearly had a very very specific strategy going yeah yeah but i mean i i think it's a good point josh like it, it to, you also brought up about red star paper mario conversation i think that's kind of like the general like sentiment of, of tonight's show it's just kind of like listen we're talking about games for fun none of this is life or death none <laughs> of this is super serious it's just a good time that's it it ain't it ain't that serious bro facts that's what it is um that said though you know i have made several nash weedle videos um you know i always say yo take this with a grain of salt but i have been kind of leaning oh i think this person has some information because the way they said things in the past and the way it seems like some of the things that have been corroborated like oh i think this person might have something but then on the flip side then they turn around and, and talk about Animal Crossing like two years in advance. And I'm like, okay, I doubt they actually have inside info info of the brainstorming sessions for the beginning of Animal Crossing development. But then, you know, GDC comes out and some of the things they said sort of line up with how they started Mario Wonder development. But it's it's super subtle. It doesn't necessarily prove anything. Right. And then, you know, I've been asking for months if, if people could like provide like, you know, actual proof of something where Nashville's gone something blatantly wrong. Because he's made a lot of claims. Some of the things have been proven true. Other things haven't been proven true yet, but they've also been reported by other places that are considered to be credible afterwards. Like just switch to dev kits being out there and enhanced backwards compatibility. I've already mentioned the Metroid Dread thing to Kingdom Come. He he teased three he teased three announcements the day before. Uh, the Game Awards and Nintendo announced three different N64 games, which hadn't happened before. So there are some things that have been like, oh, that's kind of interesting. But then again, talking about Animal Crossing two years in advance, I'm not so sure about that, right? Um, and then finally, after me making several videos that have seen thousands of views, asking in each video for people to sh for people to share me something that this person has done that's just blatantly wrong, this week, finally... They're coming out the woodworks. And there's been a whole bunch of things that he said in the past that I'm like, oh, well, that was wrong. Okay, why was it wrong? Um, and so let me share with you some of those things. I made a video a couple days ago, right? Um, because uh, Pokerex had shared with me um, about how he had, uh, Nash was talking about how Breath of the Wild 2 is supposed to come out holiday 2020. Obviously that was wrong, but I think there's a possibility that Nintendo may have wanted Breath of the Wild to at one point to be a holiday 2020 release. But if we know, if, if you look at how Zelda development goes, especially because this was DLC at first for, for uh, Breath of the Wild, the, the, the trajectory of Zelda development can change. And so it's possible maybe that was going to happen at one point, but that's it's so hard to prove that. Um, so I would say it's definitely a, a point against Nash Weedle. Uh, but I will also say that it's possible that there may have been some confusion because we did get a Zelda game for the holiday, which is what he was claiming, and it was Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity. So that one is, doesn't totally, like, in my opinion, completely, like, uh, tell me that Nash Weedle has zero credibility, especially because he's had several other things that have been corroborated by others. However... Yeah. 
And to quickly um, interject on that point, Breath it. of the Wild was initially supposed to come out in 2015. So that's a very long difference between holiday 2015 and, and uh, March 2017. 2017. Yeah, and then we had the pandemic between, um, you know, for between the during the tiers of the kingdom development, so that delayed things too. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's possible, but you know, it's right. it's, it's. I'm not it's, saying it's, either way. I'm just that's just another little sure get information. Well, let me when share it comes with you to Animal other... Crossing, the yeah, only thing ahead. that makes me think it may have any validity at all is Isabel yeah. never stops tweeting, and I cannot understand why she like every event i'm like what is, is this marketing Isabel that twitter? they're doing yeah she has her own the animal oh. crossing okay. twitter is run by isabel and every event they still tweet and i'm like what like this ain't happening with smash this ain't i mean i guess we get We're spirits smash periodically spirits. Yeah. yeah but but it not it's not, not for a long while though. times a month getting tweets i'm just like what what fire are they still stoking at this point like it it just has me that, wondering no that is interesting right um because you know we go to the smash situation we got the spirits right but they stopped for a long while but mm -hmm. the spirits have come back now and the re and people are speculating the reason they've come back now also sakura has stopped with his youtube channel it's kind of seemingly lining up it could be the case that they are now working on the next smash brothers so they're stoking the flames they're putting out the spirits again because they they see the light at the end of the tunnel they want people to be aware of smash so maybe there's something to that idea um but then but how does but how is nash weedle privy to the brainstorming sessions that happen at the beginning of animal crossing development that epd group that's kind of where you know, maybe there's talks happening, you know, behind the scenes or what have you, but it it is definitely I don't know. I that's I think it is a, it's it's certainly reason to be skeptical. So let me share uh, you this other these other things that people pointed out to me um that Nashwood was wrong about. So this is in Spanish, but I'll kind of translate a little bit. Right? Leak Express Bowser's Fury estará disponible para adquirirlo de forma individual más adelante. Basically, that means Bowser's Fury will be made available in, in an individual form later on. That was back in 2021. That never that never happened. So, you know, that's just, just wrong. Didn't happen. Now, is it possible that plans changed? It is possible that plans changed. But we can't prove that. Um, here's another one. Leak Express. Algo de Nintendo Vuelo esta año. Regresará Nintendo Selects con precios reducidos para los juegos de ventas de Switch. That basically means something uh, from Nintendo is happening later this year. Um, returning our Nintendo Selects with reduced prices of top selling Switch games. That's another rough translation, but Nintendo Selects have still not happened. This is 2024. This is, this is a long time ago. Uh, so... I, I don't even know what's going on with Kingdom Hearts, but I don't think I need to do everything, right? Um, I think there's some other things here, but there's a little bit more up for debate there. But the point is, there is a history from years ago, 2021, right? Where, uh, you know, Nash Weedle was, he said, he said, he said several things that have been wrong, right? So before the argument, oh, he hasn't been wrong about anything. No, he's been wrong about things in the past. So that is the new thing. Now, does that mean he has zero credibility in my eyes? I wouldn't say zero because he's also gotten things right. And other supposed credible venues still corroborate some of his stories. But also, I, he's no Pioro, right? I wouldn't even he's no Nate the Hate, right? Like, like he's, to me, you know, if you, to me, right, Pioro, Nate the Hate, Nash Weedle. And now Nash Weedle's like down here. Like I'm going to need, like for me, like now I would say my opinion has changed on him and I'm going to need corroboration from an other venue. There's going to have to be like a compelling reason beyond just his word for me to kind of humor it more so than I have in the past. And I've waited for this kind of info for months because I was not privy to it until this week. So that's kind of where I stand on it, but I don't know. What do you guys make of that? Do you still think 
he could be he could have inside sources or do you think it's just he's gotten some things right via prediction or following the right people and that's all it is um i think so it's interesting because uh like i i consider zippo to be the lowest form of leaker clearly someone who's just literally throwing everything out imaginable. i didn't even mention zippo zippo yeah. it's like so down i didn't even yeah, he's mention so it. down he's very clearly just making everything up and doing educated guesses and once in a while gets something right and even then if you look at his right it's not even exactly the way he said it but he'll still take mm -hmm. credit for it uh so so you know and this is why i stopped covering zippo at, at my channel because he, he's just at this point i've seen enough he's he's clearly just making things up um nash Weedle, i don't know if he's at zippo's level uh just because um he's kind of doing the zippo thing and that he said a lot that hasn't happened yet uh and he's now you, as you've shown evidence he's gotten things wrong obviously we know he's gotten a few things right so the, the, the it's starting to feel more like a zippo where he's just said so much and so much of it is about something that's not happening for a while and zippo does the same thing I almost start to wonder if Zippo and Nashville are the same person. Because uh, I started thinking more about it as you were showing that stuff. I'm like, you know, a lot of things that Nash Riddle has said are about things that are years away, which is exactly what Zippo does. Right. Um, it's it's it, it's what some of those things that like we're not going to remember to even check. To even check at, and when yeah. it comes out. And, and even but if like some of the things are right, you think about it like, oh, he said something like backwards compatibility. I'm like, yeah, Nintendo's only had that on every sequel system ever. So like, yeah. it's not even like a hard or thing. Enhanced to backwards compatibility is different. Sure, though. enhanced, yeah, but but even then, like Xbox like, is doing that though. Yeah, like other systems yeah. are doing that, and yeah. if, if it is a switch, like, and we know what DLSS, like, it's just sort of like it's a pretty safe logical conclusion yeah. that there'd be some sort of enhanced backwards compatibility. But enhanced backwards compatibility could literally just mean because of the way games work now with dynamic dynamic resolutions yeah. and not always hitting their frame rates it yeah. just is Runs does better. run better yeah. which takes no like actual input from any like that's not something nintendo specifically did that's just would be how yeah, it any game with unlocked frame rates and unlocked resolutions would literally just hey you're on more powerful hardware you're just naturally gonna run better right um, and Nintendo used dynamic resolution, you know, this entire generation. So everything would just run at its highest resolution and look better. I, I, I think it's one of those That's things. Kind of expectation. I, 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 it's one of those things where um, I kind of look at him the same way that I look at Necro Felipe Lima in that I need to see a lot more stuff correct for me to like even consider anymore. Uh, because like Necro Felipe Lima doesn't have a lot of stuff that's tied directly to him. A lot of it's building off of others, but that's that was known that he was doing that. Um, whereas Nash Weedle has a lot of original things and a bunch that apparently was wrong in the past. There's probably even more than the examples given. Oh yeah, um, it's just he's yeah. clearly deleted tweets. I think also be well. I want to look into. I haven't looked into that fully, right? He, I, I seen him accused of deleting tweets, and the Breath of the Wild one is still up. Yeah, the Breath and of the Wild one's up. Yeah, and he actually, during that tw that Twitter thread, was actually, he, like, did a live stream. Like, he was wanting to kind of explain and talk about. So I yeah. think the effort to kind of explain and have a, an open dialogue with people, to me, that's not, like, skirting the issue, at least, right? Because there could be people that could just, you know, not even address that they get things yeah. wrong. Just, you know, yeah, there, there are people who do that, right? Yes. He doesn't do that. So I would say that that if there's a point in his favor, there is that. And I also like with the Animal Crossing thing and the brainstorming. Um, one of the biggest red flags to me with a, a lot of leakers or insiders or people who claim to be is when they give too much information. Right. And like yeah. Nate the Hate not given information like that. Even Emily Rogers back in the day. No, nope, not information like that. And these are proven people, Pioro don't give anything close to that kind of information so these people that have proven track records for decades or for pioro over the last year it's like if no other proven person has access to that level of information you suddenly do yeah it's and odd. you have it access to it years ahead of time it yeah it would suggest that i the mean the thing you have is like 
you know, you literally know someone who's a part it's of like, like the Zippo WPP. who he gets really yeah. too descriptive with some of his rumors and then the stuff doesn't happen. So yeah. it just feels like it's starting to feel more and more like he just throws a lot of shit out there. And I think one of the things that's helped him in particular maintain um, his credibility. And again, I'm not saying, by the way, guys, I don't know if I'm going to cover Nashville in the future. I have no idea. Uh, cause I, this is the first time I've seen the evidence because it wasn't yeah. sent to me. Um, but what I will say about it, just from my perspective, is for me, I don't read, understand, or speak any other language than English. So uh, I'm very reliant on Google Translate, and it's very hard for me to dig into back tweets on foreign sources. So I try to do my best, and I, again, I was able to find the German patent, and that, I mean, that was like a three, four-hour adventure just to find that patent, all for me to, what, bring it up on a live stream. It wasn't even big deal for me content wise so it's like a lot it takes a lot of time for me to look up that kind of stuff so for me it's often just not worth the effort um and so i just end up being like whatever if he's wrong he's wrong it's a rumor like it, i'm not acting like it's a fact anyways sure. but when you when when all i ever bring up is like oh well he was right about metroid dread and he was right about this thing and hey someone else corroborated who is reliable this other thing that he said and it's like, well, okay, I'm making it sound like he's extremely reliable. And um, right. I'm, I'm definitely not going to do that anymore. If I did cover him, I'd have to mention, no, actually, he's been proven to have stuff wrong, even though it was years ago. Maybe there's other stuff out there. And we're just, I just am not aware of it. Right. Uh, so I kind of look at it as I think he's just got away with it because all the outlets that I've noticed, almost all the outlets covering him besides that one YouTube channel. Uh, and I'm sure you know which one I'm talking about. Nintendo leaks. Yeah, um, Nintendo leaks. Who are almost, friends with him, by the way? Yeah, who are who are literally friends with him? Uh, yeah. All of all of the other coverage for him has always been English speaking places that probably also aren't digging all the way through his entire history in a foreign language, and it's an, enabled him to be like, hey, no one cares about what I said in 2020 and 2021 anymore because I got Metroid Dread correct, which still could have just been a lucky guess so it's a hell of, it's a hell of a guess though but and i mean I, it, it is and it isn't because it's not like metroid dread wasn't a thing that previously existed like it's a known thing i'm not saying that like at the time that he said it and what he said like it super lined up and it's very awesome that that, that ended up being real but right. it's still one of those things that's like well it's not like he did emily rogers where she said it's called literally kingdom battle it's a rabbits and mario crossover game in 2016 and everyone's just like you're so full of shit and then <laughs> right. old, that's exactly yeah. what it is right six that's months right. later like that, he's that's not giving much... us something that a name that we hadn't heard before you know right like so yeah i agree it, with that yeah so so it's just one of those things where i don't know if i'm going to cover him anymore maybe on some live streams but it, it, it's He's giving me a lot of, after seeing what you said, it's very much Zippo vibes, which I already got from the, the Animal Crossing thing was the first red flag I have where I'm like, you're aware of a brainstorming session, which is usually like literally the top brass behind the IP and it's like five people in a room. There's no way. There's just no way. You're, those top yeah. brass, this shit ain't coming out from the top brass. No. Like, like how often do you, do you hear the Miyamoto, Aonuma, Fujibayashi brainstorming sessions for the next Zelda game get out to the public? It just this doesn't happen. Like ever, it only yeah. gets out when they tell us about it. I think the only thing that I, the only thing about that that I find interesting, right, is there. There's two things, and I covered this in a video on Friday. I don't yeah, know yeah, it, I, right? I watched that video. Yeah. A lot of people were like, "Yeah, that's just a coincidence," and it may be just a coincidence because it's nothing like really. Well, and, ev and everyone knows that brainstorming is like how every game starts. Yeah, basically. but. Yeah. Yeah, I looked at the Splatoon uh, GDC talk. I looked at the Zelda GDC talks. I haven't seen a panel in those. It's like, here, we literally had a brainstorming session. That wording was used for Nashville, which, again, doesn't confirm anything. I just find it slightly interesting. Yeah, yeah. And also in conjunction, a focus of the talks with Mario Wonder Development, which wasn't necessarily the focus for talks for all the GDC Nintendo panels, right? Is that there was... A myriad of ideas left yeah. over. And Nash Widow talked about this before anything else publicly. Now, you can simply make that that jump. It's You can make that logical leap that they would have in a myriad of ideas. Uh, because the timing on it, um, Nash Widow initially started talking about this many, many ideas left over in Mario Wonder October 1st. 
Yeah. Nintendo put out their own developer diary of Mario Wonder uh, saying about the thousands of ideas left over. Yep. October 17th. So I find the timing interesting. But sure. Of course, it doesn't confirm anything. And of course, almost every interview for every major Nintendo game has also said that they have leftover ideas. Yeah. yeah. I mean, think back to the Wind Waker. They literally had cut dungeons. For sure. So, they had, so like, it's very. Always, cut. So it, it was one of those, I understand yeah, those things. I just thing, want to make the distinction you know? that yeah. there was a focus and an emphasis yeah. on the myriad it's of the ideas. time, the timing of when he said it, then to immediately yeah. like two weeks later, all of a sudden it's confirmed and it's like, Oh, right. But it's also, and I think that's, that that's one of the interesting things is outside of Metroid dread. And I guess you could say the number three, I uh, could have just got lucky. Uh, maybe he looked at how Nintendo's announced things in the past on, and maybe it's always been three Could things. Just be a master predictor. Yeah, I mean, literally, I, I, I've never done this, but maybe if you go back and look at all prior times that Nintendo has shown stuff, um, as a, you know, in certain events, it's always been in, in pairs of three, and we just didn't pay attention to it because it didn't seem relevant. Uh, right. And all of a sudden, oh, now you hear, oh, he just knew because he paid attention. It's 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 same way we can make predictions by looking at patterns. Um, so I don't know about the three thing because again, I'm again I don't care enough to do the research into it. The Metroid Dread thing I always thought was interesting, but also I can understand why maybe it's a lucky guess. Everything is explainable from him in the sense that it could have all just been dumb luck. He doesn't have like that definitive, like I absolutely had to have known this moment. Like Emily Rogers had that several times in her past. Um, Nate the Hates had that a couple of times. Uh, he hasn't had that moment yet where it's like, well, anyone could have technically guessed this if you paid attention to Nintendo close enough. Right. I mean, just the uh, for the partner showcase. Now, unless I, maybe the Animal Crossing thing is, maybe these brainstorm ideas are the next Animal Crossing, the ones that he brought up, and it's like, well, shit, then. Yeah, that's your moment. Yeah. Because you brought up some crazy ideas that it just or, don't you know seem what if, Animal Crossing. What if like. there's a Bayonetta 3 and um, you know, a special version? Because he said there's gonna be a special version of Bayonetta 3. Um, did we count that? Yeah, what did he say? It was that for Switch 2 or something, wasn't it? Yeah, for Switch 2. I mean I think, what, I think that yeah. I mean, I don't know. Or, or is that, I mean, just, that just, say, or just say just saying just saying like, oh, there's gonna be a special version of Bayonetta 3 and Switch 2. You mean like all the other times they ported the prior band into games to the new system. <laughs> like they've already yeah. done it twice. So like, it would make sense that the one for switch would be on switch two with some definitive edition version. So it could just, so you would put that under it. Eh, like, yes. I mean, I mean, they literally did it like okay. Bayonetta one. They brought, they brought it to Wii U after yeah. it got two, two and one were then brought over to switch with new versions. So it would make sense. They probably be brought back as a trilogy. On the next, but one. are they remakes or remasters? The remasters. <laughs> That's what we need to know. <laughs> They're make masters, okay? So That's what again, I don't want to completely dismiss them. I, I, I just, I just find yeah, a lot I, of the I things he's saying totally as being either, because I want to be open to possibilities. I'm feeling too yeah. much. I'm feeling too much of the Zippo vibe right now with him. Yeah. That's all. That, that that that's all. I'm not putting him on that level yet. It's a roller coaster for me. What is that? All the Animal Crossing thing, I thought it was interesting, and but guys, I doubted it. I don't want to put him there because the more guys that I want, it's just even more to cover. Like, dude, go to Zippo's blog. He's put up like 50 things in the last two months. I haven't covered any of it. I, dude, you know how much more working. views I'd have on my channel if I kept covering Zippo? <laughs> yeah. So, like, it's just, I, 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 there's a part of me that gets to a point that in good faith, I just can't keep doing it because I know some people believe every single thing I say in a video, regardless of the rumors and the, all the caveats. You Everyone's could like, say, nope, you could say 10 times, listen, guys, this may not be true. Take it with a grain of salt. I literally start off, this is a rumor Please and is not it. a fact. Please doubt. And then all of a sudden, end of the video, why are you sharing this? You're just misinforming. I'm, what? So here's He's actually another the interesting thing words in the video. Um, that I kind of disagree on. I think it's actually important to cover these things sometimes because if there's already a mass of people that believe this and talk about it, by talking about it, providing sourcing, providing imagery, you're creating a historical record. So what happens? We can go back and check these things. Oh, dude, but, I but love the, <laughs> the whole Nash Weedle thing, right? No one, there wasn't, there wasn't anyone covering Nash Weedle back in 2021 where you could be like, oh, here are all these things clearly shown. And then we could, so we could actually like, you know what I mean? We can showcase, hey, 
we covered this. Here's all the evidence. They were wrong. Like it's, I think it's better to cover some of these things when there's room for debate. Uh, for Zippo, did that? I don't. That's not even worth worth it because <laughs> that's. Just, I mean, just a randomly, um, uh, recently, uh, Princess Peach Showtime came out. Uh, not too long ago, um, Zippo made this argument that several Nintendo games like Mario vs. Donkey Kong, Princess Peach Showtime, are using the same the, the new 3D Mario engine, <laughs> except we now know that Princess Peach Showtime was made this by Goodfeel, which is not even a Nintendo developer. And using so Unreal that's, Engine. Yeah. 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 Uh, so that's... Yeah, Unless the, the, Mario Mario's made the Unreal Engine, that's that's what that confirms. <laughs> Dude, so, no, Zippo's hilarious. I, I had him into his vlog in a bit. So, hey, guys, there's a reimagining slash reboot of Final Fantasy Star Online. This is a, this is Zippo exclusive right yeah. here. Oh, by the way, oh, all the Sonic the Hedgehog scoops that have happened all week, Zippo's trying to take credit for it, that he's the one yeah. who put it all out there. And yet his posts, at least the comments on his post, because he doesn't have timestamps, are all after other people were already yeah and just for the record i don't want to encourage any sort of like negative attacks towards zippo or nash weedle these are people right um you to know, be fair, you zippo if you say a negative comment he'll just block your entire account on his blog yeah well i mean that's it's toxic and i don't think that's fair um yeah. don't take it seriously you know you know take it with a grain of salt you know i'm not saying to not to ignore them like you know if it's fun for you you know if you think there's some truth there yeah. I'm not gonna incur I'm not gonna discourage you, you know, but you know, we're just sure. talking about why we don't talk about it. Yeah. Or while we'll, if we do talk about say Nash Weedle, why we're kind of adjusting our expectations now because of the new information that's been presented to us. But uh Yep. Yeah. Um I got nothing else to say on the matter. I don't know if there's anything else you guys want to add. Yeah. I'm good. I just want to circle back real quick to the original question what? you asked me about leaks and everything. Yeah. And uh the, the speculation, the rumors, that kind of stuff. I think it's fun. I think it's, you know, it's, it makes a good conversation, but when we see like these ransoms happening and like actual documents coming out and showing us the three years of what's that stuff. I don't, I don't, it takes the fun out of all of this, honestly, like the leak like, leaks. Y yeah. Like on the, like on the PlayStation side with like, oh, yeah, like, yeah. Okay. The blatant you know, leaks it, were like their three-year plans. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That stuff, I do not. I, that sucks. I, stuff does. like the GTA it's, 6 leak, which was like just completely yes. unfinished. Nothing like the final product. Yeah. 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 And just all those documents and everything that, you know, wasn't it like Insomniac or... or uh, yeah, Insomniac. Uh, yeah. Just that, that kind of stuff, not not cool the the listening talking about these guys trying to guess things right or maybe they have insight like uh, that's 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 all in good fun and i think it's uh, i think it makes for great conversation but but the 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 malicious stuff and the I, i'm just not you know not a fan personally yeah so i'm gonna put a poll up in the chat i'm gonna do some q a to close out here I want to make sure I write this 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 question uh, correctly for the poll for the chat. And so currently, I have how many souls would you sacrifice to see the original <laughs> Metroid Prime Four canceled project that had, will never <sighs> come out? All of them. One thousand souls. How many? Okay, I got it. How many souls would you sacrifice to see the original Metroid Prime Four canceled project? All. <laughs> Many. <laughs> Some. And then the last one. Just you. Mm -hmm. There's not like an option. The known option is not voting. Facts. I just like to point out, guys, that I'm actually a, a leaker. I, I got, you know, something. You can my track record is great. That last that last Nintendo Direct. I called it Star Wars Battlefront One and Two remastered. I knew about it, guys. I that wasn't just a lucky guess. It was actually, actually sources. I'm coming here to say it right now. I'm the next upcoming leaker. Yeah. By the way, Nate, I know you you wanted to do your live stream soon, so don't feel bad if you need to step out. Um, I'm just wrapping up here with uh, Q and A, so it's up to you. It's always up to you. You could leave. Whenever sure. You want. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. muted still. Oh. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll I'll dip out. That's fine. All right. All right. Well, thanks for having me on, man. I'm, I'm sure I'll be yeah, on. Yeah, man. Again. Yeah.
No, nope, I'll, I'll invite you on again, despite what happened. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me get worse next time. Make it a theme. All right, man. Yeah. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. Actually, we're going to do a podcast tomorrow, so. Yeah, literally. Yep. All right, All right. Later, man. See you, man. All right. Nate's channel is linked in the description below, guys, if you haven't checked him out before. But uh, I, there's a couple super chats I didn't get to from earlier in the stream. Let me get to those. Um, Taker610. After the lukewarm sales performance of Prime Remastered, is Nintendo worried about Prime 4 flopping? They're being way too secretive in my mind. Um, thank you for Super Chat, buddy. I think it's an awesome question. Uh, I I wish I could tell you that I, I, if, I, if I knew, if I knew that if they were, you know, worried. I The thing about Metro Prime 4, and this, this is kind of, the, I think, the crazy part, if we account for the canceled project, right? The canceled project that you will sacrifice my soul to see, um, you know, um, and then just how long the game's been in development and the kind of talent they've been hiring over the years, this has not been a cheap effort. No. It's been a very expensive effort from Nintendo. And if we account for some of the rumors I heard, of course, rumor, take it with a grain of salt, you don't know if it's true or not, but the ones coming from the Xbox era podcast, how this game is supposed to be like big and vast and it looks visually impressive, akin to Halo Infinite, that that says some pretty exciting, ambitious things, right? If true. So like, you gotta think this is not a cheap game, you know? Um, I, 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 I don't, I would like to think that Nintendo believes in this, I would like to think that this game is going to be successful. Uh, I think one of the reasons why Nintendo is being quiet is because they are, one, making sure the game is as good as possible. Uh, very much in the same way they took a, an extra year or so to polish Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, we've seen we've seen evidence that they've been actually in the QA stages for a while already. Um, but also, yeah, they're probably trying to formulate the best path for this game. Is the best path for it to be a holiday title for just Switch 1? Or is the best path to put out Prime 2 and 3 this year and then save Prime 4 as a part of the launch window as a cross-gen title for Switch 2? We don't know, right? Maybe Nintendo doesn't know. Maybe they're still figuring that out. Um, so are they worried? I, I, I It's tough for me to say, but you know, I would say that... I, I think Nintendo at least knows if this game is going to do better than Metroid Dread. You know, and if they, if they sell four million, that I would hope that that's enough. I, I'm going to assume that's going to be a seventy dollar game. Um, although you can make the argument mm -hmm. that a seventy dollar game on Switch that's not Tears of the Kingdom might be a really bad idea. Um, yeah. So, but if it's a Switch two game and the standard is seventy bucks, like if all if all big games are seventy bucks, they can get away with it then. Um, and so, but I assume it's going to be a cross gen title, right? So there's still going to be a Switch one version regardless. Something I've kind of thought, like if there's a cross-gen version, the Switch Two version will be seventy bucks, but it is looks it looks visually better, right? It's got like HDR and all that cool stuff, but the Switch version is sixty bucks. So if you don't care for the visual enhancements, you have still have your Switch One, you get it slightly cheaper, and maybe that's kind of how they try and maximize sales having two different versions there. Uh, so I, I think Nintendo ha is putting together a plan so it's successful. Um, so I would say they're maybe only slightly worried. I just don't think Nintendo expected Prime Remastered to sell a ton of copies. Um, clearly, they didn't market it in order to do so. They just kind of threw it out there and was just like, it will do what it will do, and we're fine with that, seemingly. Um, I don't think that they were like, oh, God, it only sold a million. We were expecting five or something. Like, I don't think they thought this was going to be like a huge seller um, or that they probably would have marketed it more. Um, so I don't think the uh, sales of Prime and Remastered necessarily uh, gauge like how well they think Prime 4 is going to do. I've always kind of been of the mind like healthy Nintendo gives them the chance to get weird or dive into their niches a little bit more. And I, I think they knew out the out of the gate how the Switch was going to do. Like especially with their plan of attack in the first year and how they were going to keep the software flowing. And uh, are, are they, I, th I think they'll do, I, I would assume they're probably happy with the numbers of, of prime remastered, you know, the same as the same as dread o only because it's like, these aren't, it's not a Mario game. 
right? If you have a Mario game. game, yeah, I'm I'm fairly certain it did. I mean, I, you know, I could be wrong, but I mean, they're they just seem very healthy, and they can they can they can take yeah. more of these chances, and that's the kind of that's where we win as gamers, honestly. That's where you know not everybody is a is a has Samus on their wall behind them, right? But I mean, for those of us that that do and that uh, you know love all of these series, it's it, it's a fantastic time, and yeah. you know if games like you know if if Pikmin and stuff can continue to get made and kind of sell you know the way the way it does i i think i i think prime's gonna do just fine and what's i mean look at the original numbers of games like the last of us you know it was like it was sitting at like seven million and that's that seems relatively low when you think about animal crossing and mario kart right. and and zelda right like th th those seem low and in some cases they were, but they also had way bigger, like their budgets were, were through the roof. Right. right. Whereas like, you know, like we talked about, but Prime Remastered probably did not have a, 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 a huge budget. And also it's, it's almost a game that's used as marketing material, right? Because it right. helps to start building brand awareness for, for, and I, yeah. I think, I, I don't, I don't think they're too worried. I, I don't I think it I think it did what they wanted it to do and it sets them up to do two more remasters that are probably a low cost prior to the fourth game launching and we end up with all four games either on one system or they end up doing another trilogy again for switch two and then do four and and either way they're they're still making money with uh with with, with the sales of prime yeah yeah I assume prime remaster is probably used for a lot of R&D for building the engine that Metroid Prime 4 is running on. So I'm sure that that, you know, ate a lot of the cost, so they didn't care as much about making that back specifically um, from that game. Yeah. But also, it's like, you need games... Like, uh, on one hand, you can't go too far in this direction because you end up with a Wii U situation where it's only mm -hmm. hardcore Nintendo fans care about it. But at the same time, if you don't have those hardcore Nintendo fans talking about games like this and bringing hype and being like, this is a great system with all these variety of games, then it doesn't push the system as much because you don't have as many like hardcore Nintendo fans talking about the system. And even if the game only sells a million copies, it still helps, um, like... See, with the switch it helps like give out a positive look like having these kind of games like even if metroid prime 4 comes out and only sells four or five million copies and it's a a switch to kind of launch window cross gen title it'll still be regarded as something that's like a huge reason to buy switch 2 and it'll get people talking about switch 2 in general and it will help switch to sales um so like games like this even if they don't sell directly to consumers, they still help in other ways as well. And a use case like to go back and uh, look at like Mario Golf on DS or on 3DS, that game didn't break a million, and we still got Super Rush, and and it was honestly Super Rush was a worse game than the 3DS <laughs> game because you could do asynchronous uh, tournaments and there was there was a lot. It was just it was just a better game, and. They still, you know, even not breaking a mill, they still can continued with the with with the golf series, which I'm super grateful they did. I, I'm 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 a fan. I just wish it the, the Switch version had been more like uh, what was it, Toadstool Tour or whatever. Maybe that was the GameCube one. I don't mm. know. There's 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 so many, but um, it, the uh, yeah, it didn't break a million, and we still saw we still saw a sequel. So I don't think I think I think seeing um, seeing a game go over a million i think it's going to be i think it's going to be just fine yeah yeah i also think that uh you know it's kind of like kind of like being a youtuber right like there are videos i make and i know it's not going to necessarily do extremely well right like you know you gotta experiment sometimes like, you know maybe you'll find a new audience 
Um, but like, for example, I made a Pokemon video today. I always hope I make a Pokemon video is going to do really well. But I also know most of you guys don't like watching the Pokemon videos. I don't know why, but every time I make a Pokemon video, it's ranked 10 of 10. <laughs> it just is. Um, but I still make them sometimes because I like Pokemon, right? And I would think that, you know, sometimes when it comes, you know, the, the developers of Nintendo, they ultimately, they are artists, right? They create. Yes, they kind of have to, you know, there, there are business decisions being made, but I do think there's a little bit of a balance of, hey, let's make something because we want to. And, you know, right. sometimes that we're, we're going to see things just because there's it, it a little bit of a passion project. It, it's a blend is, is really what I'm trying to right. say. Uh, so I, I want to point something out here. Uh, Bethany um, in the chat pointed out something that I, I double checked it and they are correct. Um, so Bethany H. here said it both Wired and IGN had articles that mentioned the Wondrous 2000 ideas a month before Nashville. This is true. I looked at, I found an IGN article here from September 4th, which is definitely almost an entire month before October 1st. Uh, so it was already technically public information. So that's one less point that Crit Nashville does not have. Um, so, you know, definitely be skeptical, my friends. Uh, thank you, Bethany, for pointing that out. Um, but a couple more super chats I got here. Um, Luis Alberto Zazadi, thank you for the super chat. Really, I love Nintendo GameCube. What about NSO? I think Nintendo has so much money to, to make and games that they can remaster and remake from GameCube now that's not going to happen anytime soon. But maybe next generation, you know, that's that's still up for grabs. Yeah. I mean, I think there's definitely room for them to have, um, you know, depending on the level of of uh, work put into a remaster. Um, the original version still has a lot of worth. In fact, we have multiple games on NSO that have newer versions, updated versions on the Switch, and yet they still have NSO versions. So it's not impossible um, that, uh, you know, GameCube could still come. But I do think they'll wait for Switch 2. Uh, I don't think they're going to do that right now. I don't think they need yeah. to. I they don't. don't I think they're going to want something big to uh, bring in more subscriptions on Switch too. Yeah, and I do want to say I don't even want to predict like GameCube NSO on Switch too. I'm not saying it can't happen, but like if it happens, I feel like it would happen years into Switch too. Like <clears> not like hey, Switch two is coming out. One of the big features is it has GameCube NSO. Like I don't think that's happening because can you imagine? Hey, look, we're getting Metro Prime two. We just got Metro Prime one. We got Pikmin one and two. We're getting Pikmin one thousand year door. Maybe we get F Zero GX remaster, and then next year Nintendo's like, hey, guess what? You know that Wind Waker HD you just got for Christmas? Well, you can play it on Switch two for free. I don't think that's gonna happen. I mean, it would be very different than Wind Waker HD though, because it'd be the yeah, original style without but, any updates. But do you, do you, but I I get it, but also. Do you really envision that a year later? Mm, um, I mean, I don't think it's impossible, but I I also don't think it's likely. I think it'll right. be a couple of years. Yeah, and that, that and that's why I'm saying I wouldn't predict it, right? But right. um, could it happen three years into the Switch 2's life cycle once Switch is completely dried up? You know, um, like for example, uh, we got Mario 64 on NSO, but Mario 64 was made available on switch beforehand for with 3d all-stars but after a sizable gap of time n64 online was announced for switch years into the life cycle and some games like that were made available in a different way it, it it'd be interesting to see if they did something with uh almost like a game pass route where there was more day and date uh, potential for for new games based on a subscription just like Xbox has. And then if that being the yeah. case, it takes a lot of the sting out of any of those purchases because tech, like if they follow that route, both the games would be available, right? You could play, mm. uh, you could play, you know, play Link's Awakening and Link's Awakening. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so right. that, that would kind of take a lot of the, and then, but then if you still want to just purchase stuff individually or you want to go for the physical copy, like that's great as well. My, my hope is that like we get to a point where like the library of Nintendo games that are available through a subscription is major. I want to be able to play every Mario Kart on the yeah. next console, that would be including nice. the DS and 3DS, right? Like some of the games that were harder to stream, harder to like, like, I we want to be at that point and i think when they 
I, I only see it happening via subscription, which I know people are probably here, or, you know, m maybe not real happy about hearing, but but I would rather have the option to play all of those games. Well, let me I ask you a question. To. Are you talking about just retro games or new games as well? I mean, if they follow, see, Nintendo has the brand muscle right now that they could pull more of a Sony where the day and date doesn't happen, but then they put the newer ones onto the streaming later. Okay. Right. But um, almost like a like an alternative Nintendo Select line, like, hey, you can play yes. some of these games for free a while after release, maybe six months, mm -hmm. a year or whatever. Correct. But I mean, that also keeps the value higher for that subscription, right? If it's like if if I'm going to play the new Mario Kart in my subscription in six months, I may not purchase it you know, knowing that that's I'm really that. interesting. You know, because and that's what Sony do. does, whereas Microsoft does yeah. the opposite. They're like, no, the day it releases, but they were front running it. And they also didn't have that brand muscle to be able to flex like Nintendo right. does. And, and so right and so like I like the idea, but I, my, the, in the back of my head, I'm like, yeah, but Nintendo games sell like hotcakes. Like could Nintendo like, you know what I mean? Like would Nintendo like, you know, if Tears of the Kingdom is going to sell 20 million copies, the amount of money they made from games like that. If they go with a subscription service, they're kind of losing out on a lot of those potential sales. Um, unless you go, you know, if but if it's there's a select line that's different, right? Because there have been some games that have been delisted, like um, Paper Mario, the Origami King, Metroid Dread. Those games that they've already deemed, hey, we're not really getting that much sales from them already. Putting those games on there, that's interesting. I could kind of see yeah. that. And you know it's interesting, like uh, what what it just it's just getting me thinking. Like we're talking about, oh, could Nintendo Selects come back? Maybe the delisting of these games is not a sign that Nintendo Selects is coming back, but maybe it's this to your your point here, and it's part of like a new online offering that Nintendo has with their next gen. I don't see a world, and it's for a completely different conversation, where Nintendo doesn't move to a higher subscription service with more games. And games like Mario Kart, Splatoon, having battle passes similar to Rocket League and Fortnite. Like, that, they're looking at where all the money is going. And it's going into those things. And they want, their investors want that money going in their pocket as well. So, as much as we probably don't like it, I know it's not like a conversation a lot of people want to have. Like, we probably will still end up seeing more games that we can play for a monthly fee. But as collectors yeah that means that we are collecting less like i don't i don't buy xbox games anymore they're just in my yeah. netflix library you know at, at yeah. netflix finger like quotations but right so i yeah it does make sense though but uh, uh continuing with the chat i want to wrap this up soon um lewis alberto thank you for super chat what about new higher warriors for nintendo switch um well it's interesting i actually kind of talked about this few days ago for a video um i think there is reason to kind of think oh maybe we could get a higher warriors imprisoning war because there's like a lot of lore potential there mm -hmm. um but i also kind of think that like while it does make sense i also kind of think that there's a, a few other different zelda offerings they could do and and you know while we may be getting close to the point where maybe we should get another warriors game like that the koei tech will maybe ready I, I i don't think they should do another zelda one ultimately i i'm kind of thinking yeah. well maybe do xenoblade warriors like i think that would be a really good fit uh i'm hoping I, I, that the next warriors game is on switch 2 because i feel like in terms of like gameplay and i mean we've already seen with um age of calamity it does not run well at all like clearly they've tapped out the potential of everything they can do on switch with a warriors game so other than just doing a different series there's nothing interesting that they can really do um sure uh, so i i would hope that they wait for switch 2 and do something that's new and unique and can leverage the power of that system to do new gameplay um things that wouldn't run on switch one because we're already running into severe limitations with the current games that they're making you know what's interesting um because you know how like there's a lot of talk and it wants to maybe emulate that 2017 year with switch 2 next year like mm -hmm. One of the games we got in 2017 was high was um, I'm sorry, Fire Emblem Warriors, right? Right. And so, what if 
um, you know, the next Monolith Soft project is a new IP, right? It's a big, awesome new IP. They want that early on for Switch 2. So Xenoblade's not made available for Monolith Soft immediately on Switch 2. But to counteract that and to also have something like that Fire Emblem Warriors game from 2017, we get a Xenoblade Warriors. So you still get that Xenoblade love, but Monolith Soft is working on a new IP so they can kind of explore that more as well and get both out within the first year or a year and a half for their next gen. That makes a lot more sense to be me. Awesome. Yeah. It would be incredible. All the different drivers and swords and oh man, that would be that would be a that would be a Warriors game I'd be excited for. A lot of yeah, I mean the lore kind of sets it up so well. I mean, Xenoblade's mm -hmm. about wars and literally three has the worlds merging. So like it it could even be like a canon game. It would it would work. Yeah. Yeah. All but you can you imagine having like I mean, we saw, you know how, like, Future Redeemed, the expansion, had, like, you know, Rex and Shulk uh, and Noah right. all together. Like, imagine, well, not Noah, but, you know, it was some someone like that. Like, but imagine them all in one place. That would be, it, it would be fun. I would be oh, fun. Yes. I'd be happy with that. And oh. for the record, if they did do a Hyrule Warriors Imprisoning War, I would be interested. I just feel like they're moving on from that. But we'll see. And one more thing here, uh, Boom Mini uh, has gifted another membership. Who, 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 who got, who, who's even made the new member? I got to find out. Hey, Game Over Jesse in the chat. What's up, buddy? Happy Halloween to you, too. Hey, yeah. that's how we met. It was Game Over Jesse. Yeah? Uh, yeah. That's how we met. That's yes. how we met. We were asking at the beginning. That was it. That was it. We did a show together. Yeah, it was yep. fun. I remember now. It's all coming mm -hmm. back okay very cool um i don't see who became the new member though the youtube chat's not working well whoever you are welcome i'll check my youtube stats later i'll find you um you'll be in the credits um but uh yeah i'll just i'll just check a couple of chats here uh, by the way everyone thank you for liking the stream super appreciated do make sure to check out josh's channel it is linked in the description below uh, he's got a lot of things going on stick it out the nintendo powercast awesome mm -hmm. show so please do check that out um is there anything you want to kind of talk about that you've been working on or or hoping to for people to check out uh i mean i'm i do a lot i do i i, I create a lot i've been live streaming on TikTok mario kart and uh we've been doing something really fun in the discord called pipe trials and you have to use the pipe frame the standard wheels any character you want and any glider and then we do a poll each week and we pick the track and everybody posts their time. And it's less about trying to be the fastest in the court and more about just trying to beat your own time and getting better at the game. And the amount of people that we have uh, like racing and, and and interacting has just been, has been super fun. And, and in fact, I started a new show called The Dirt, which is a Mario Kart podcast, which is just kind of, um, just w like learning to play the game a little more on the competitive side plus waiting okay. for the next game to come out so i'm of the mind nintendo's already been marketing the new game based on how much mario yes. kart merchandise is out there everywhere you can't go anywhere without seeing mario kart so i, I uh, actually made a video kind of i didn't talk about the merchandising though so that's interesting i want to look into that but um i made a video because nintendo had announced made, they made the announcement for mario day or the day before mario day about the the mario kart lego set that's coming out next year yep mm -hmm. and so i kind of think that that's definitely a part of the equation oh, yeah. across promotion for sure. there um yeah, yeah but, i mean, I mean like I, I am a mario kart w billboard everywhere i go if i see a new mario kart shirt which they're everywhere hot topic walmart target like fye like every like they're everywhere you cannot go to a store without seeing some kind of mario kart merch I mean, and I'm mario like, kart is nintendo's huge like game yeah. series technically you know it's right. kind of wild to think about but it is um yeah. give me a prediction when do we see the next mario kart i oh my it's just like we no were talking pressure. about the no pressure just like it's you were just... you were talking about with the um with some of the other games where they come out like cross gen kind of thing I, yeah i want to say i want to say it's either a it's either a launch game because it's had okay. more than enough time okay it's a launch game that comes out on both systems just like okay. breath of the wild did or it's a year out to grow that install base and then you know really showcase the power and to push more sales as 
you know, a year into it, you throw Mario Kart out there. It's yeah. the top selling IP. It moves more consoles. Yeah. They do a Mario Kart console. Like who's not I'm buying seven of those things? Like, you know, they'd they'd be at that point, maybe there's the, the Switch Lite 2 or Switch 2 Lite or whatever. That's right? I, who knows, you know, like I, I definitely but, think that they need to get it out early. It's gotta be yeah. it's gotta yeah. be one of their their you know their poster childs for the switch to like it, it, it's got a heavy market it i've definitely been kind of like um over like this last year with the speculation train like different things i thought about like as we progressed and you know there was a whole thinking we thought switch 2 would come out this year but then all the reports started saying well looks like it got delayed to next year right like i've kind of started transitioning to i think there's gonna be less cross-gen games and more old turkey switch like there's gonna be some I think there has to be some um, like I, I, for example, I used to think like I've been, I have this theory that we're going to get like an Ocarina of Time remake, like within the first two years of switch to kind of give us something mm -hmm. cool Zelda to bring in the Zelda cores on the fan base, but, and hold us over for like the next 3d Zelda is going to be years away. And I was like, Oh, well it kind of makes sense for switch one. Cause a lot of people get that, but obviously it's for to showcase switch two. And eventually I was like, you know what? This is about showcasing switch two. Like, it's just not going to be a switch one thing um and yeah. so like you know i'm sorry i'm transitioning my thinking for most of these things metro prime 4 though that i think that has to be like mm -hmm. on switch one because it was initially promised for switch one um yeah with mario kart i would assume switch two only but we never got an original hardcore mario kart for switch right so i can kind of see the argument um, I yeah. also think that they will go battle pass route with Mario Kart and maybe even sure. make multiplayer free. Oh, that'd be crazy. Okay, I I I, I see that though. I, I feel like I like should go bigger with their multiplayer games like that, like Warzone Call of Duty situation where you can sure. buy the base game, do all your grand prix. Maybe there's a story mode. Maybe they add more to it, but but why not like they tour was so a you could you could tour play, did well. play mario kart without buying mario kart yeah as long as you're and they, an and member. and the uh yeah. battle pack or the the booster pack or whatever like even if you didn't purchase it if you were just a like a tier one nso member you can still race those those tracks yeah. they didn't they didn't they didn't pull they didn't i don't know there's just it's the direction my my head thinks they might go only because of how you know how well all these other these other companies do with that that model i think that nintendo could go there and make money i don't think they will because i think the consumer mindset even though a lot of people are willing to to pay for these things it's still seen overall as a very negative thing and Nintendo hasn't done it. I think they would have to do it in a way that would be very compelling. They'd have to be very careful about introducing that. Um, Agreed. Plus, Agreed. they don't they don't need to do it because Mar they know the Mar next Mario Kart will sell another 30 million units as long as it's good. Oh, selfishly, I just want it to. because I create content around it and I want to have stuff to talk about all the time. Yeah. Right? And, and I also want, re like, I've, I've got a thousand hours in this game. And I'm unlocking nothing. You know what I mean? Like, I would love right, to yeah. be leveling up and continue, like. I want them to I'm tour. At, I want them to go yeah. the Mario Kart 2 route with, with the next Mario Kart. Or rather the Splatoon route, where, like, we're getting up. Right. To yeah, like, the Splatoon yeah. route is, could definitely happen. And I feel like yeah. if they were going to have done this Battle Pass idea, like, they've made three Splatoons and not done it. <laughs> and every single one of them has been an absolute banger of a seller. And they could have made so much more money if they had actually sold the updates as microtransactions. But they specifically did not do that. And I feel like that shows that they're they're not just like, oh, well, we could make a bunch of money doing a bunch of anti-consumer stuff, so we'll do it. Yeah, but Intel cares about their brand. You know, like, I right. think there's, there's value in the brand recognition, the consumer trust. Are there... It, it may be hard to kind of, for us to, for us to kind of gauge like what that value is, but it is a value, right? Like there is money lost when you break that trust. Um, right. So you know, Nintendo obviously has to weigh that. Um, yeah, I don't believe and, and that they can dip their toes in. They could they could dip their toes in um, 
lightly like halo infinite does where you get a free pass every season plus the paid one if you want you never lose that pass unlike fortnite right. like there's a there's a lot of um healthier ways to go to go about it to where like yeah. you know you don't have to spend money because of fomo because that battle pass is purchasable anytime so if you didn't pick up the if you didn't start playing it three years later you could still go back and unlock everything if you wanted to i could you also know. see a thing where like if you're if you're an nso member where it's free anyway mm -hmm. you know like there there's there's some wiggle room there and most people if you're playing games online you have nso probably so maybe for like nso like plus premium yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and then you can be more selective about what you want to pay for uh so there's there's room for that but i really just like the idea of like I, I almost feel like like you look at Mario Kart Tour, look at bo the booster course pass. It's almost like a testing ground for that. Like, hey, like just give us Mario Kart content consistently. I love the idea right. of of being able to look forward to new tracks, you know, every few months. But not even tracks. Think about the different items Costumes, that they could be testing. Skins, uh, Cost, vehicles. Yeah, but even uh, in-game items, too, items you know, like that. the the, yeah. the pow block from the Wii. You know, different like different things that we've seen over the years that could be reintroduced new items as well like yeah yeah i'm also starting to think about like you know if they, if they have like a, mi a big single player campaign like mm. think diddy kong racing like yep. that would be that would be pretty hype but uh yeah i mean we could have a whole discussion about mario kart maybe exactly. we'll do that, do, do that a little do bit later yeah yep. I, I think it'd be fun but uh anyways uh i think we are going to wrap it up um for tonight everyone thank you for coming to tonight's show um for those um that are curious I, I am going to do the tears of the kingdom run again i'm going to continue that i want to do it on the weekend but uh I, I got lazy uh so i will continue the tears of the kingdom run uh this thursday uh but uh so stay tuned for that but anyways make sure to check out josh's channel it's linked in the description uh, you can follow brandon on twitter and don't make fun of him um but if you do it's fine um okay. and yeah uh nate and ton of primes also his channel link in the description below but uh we'll see you soon take care bye, bye guys, guys.